There's no time. Here we are, back once again. Look at you, like looking at your drink level already. Big as yours, mixed. <laughs> We're as, that fruit pulp coming down. The as line. you can see from the drink level, we've already been recording. Been recording. Already. We did a couple of movie reviews. Earlier. Some warmed up already. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. You know how that happens. Know how that happens. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so this is episode. 154. Now, I had initially planned a different uh, topic for this week, uh, which I'm actually going to fob off to next week. But as I've been working on my book, Faceless Villain 3, which is only two chapters from being done. So like I said, I'm I'm on track. It should be yeah. done by the end of uh, August, just like I said, hopefully. Yeah, so um, the third, third one will be out for you. Yeah, so it'll be out very soon. While I was researching that the other day, one of the cases that I was writing about when I was writing the chapter about 1997, I started reading about it and I'm like, oh man, I remember this case because I saw it like a long time ago on Unsolved Mysteries. And I remember thinking it was really weird back at the time. So then when I started like researching it and writing about it and stuff like that, I was like, oh man, we have to do a show about this. This is one of the weirdest disappearance and murder cases at pretty much ever, like that I've ever heard of. Yeah, she's been saving it. She hadn't told me anything about just it. Just, like, the details about it are just so yeah. strange. And it's just, like, I don't... I don't know. The, this kind of, like, reminded me... It's right up there with that... Remember when we did that show on, like, uh, about Roland Owen? Like, the guy that was staying at the hotel room and then, like, he turned up dead, like, after all the phone being off the hook and yeah, all that other yeah. kind of weird shit. Um, you know, and he was dead in there even though nobody saw anybody go in the room and stuff. This is kind of a little bit like that. Um... Not quite so much, but it's just, I, I can't really think of any specific reason why this would have happened the way it happened, but apparently it did happen like that. What are you going to call this case? Um, I just called it Murder of Judy Smith, because uh, okay. that was the woman's name. All right. And it happened in 1997, and we will get into it, like I said. When, okay, so when I started I'm researching the case, I, I legit spent eight straight hours reading everything I could. Find okay. online about okay. this case. So this will be in the new, the latest book. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. That's okay. where I came across so it's it. Kind of like a teaser. Yeah, that's where All I right. came across it. And like I said, once I started reading about it, I was like, oh, I remember hearing about this on on Solved Mysteries, like years and years and years ago. So that's what we're going to be talking about in episode 154 today. So hopefully you guys will enjoy it and find it as fascinating as I found it. Um, so let's see. We'll do a couple of shout outs. Firstly, our friend of the show. Sophie, who are who also stayed with us, mm -hmm. she sent us a big ass box of candy. Yeah, from Mackinac Island, Mackinac in Island. Michigan, which yeah. we also did a show about, if you remember correctly. All That's the not real saltwater taffy and fudge. Yeah, and fudge. We're tearing it up. Did we eat all the fudge already? Uh, I think there's a little bit of fudge left. Okay. Yeah, the fudge is good. Especially that peanut butter fudge. Oh my god, they were all good. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> it was three different flavors. Yeah, and had that homemade saltwater taffy. Yeah. The difference between that saltwater taffy, you know, it's it's amazing, because like uh, store bought saltwater taffy is artificially flavored. I mean, it's good. I you know I eat it. I eat the shit out of it. But it's kind of <laughs> like Starbursts. You can just sit there and just eat them all day. Yeah. Know? Not not a handmade taffy. Can't do that. It's got natural flavors and, and, and just the way it is. After you eat about 10 pieces of it, you're satisfied. Yeah. It's kind of like you can't eat a whole bunch of fudge. Yeah. You know what I mean? Try to eat Speak for it. yourself. No, oh, man. I get to the point where I just go like, oh, man, it's just too rich. <laughs> yeah. And then you have to come back and take a second run at it. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's good. It's just yeah. Good. It's like, I'm not like. Old candy's rich. Yeah, and, yeah. like, that taffy that we got from there, it's like, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not, like, hugely into, like, fruity-type candies and stuff like yeah. that, but that taffy is yeah. almost, like, it's so creamy. It's, yeah. like, not even, like, a fruity candy, and, like, that maple taffy is out of this world. Yeah, and the chocolate t the chocolate is kind of like uh, Tootsie Rolls. Yeah, it has, like, softer, it has, like, that soft, creamy kind yeah, of... Yeah, it's real kind of creamy. Kind of uh, texture to it. It's really, yeah. really nice. I think it's, I haven't tried like all of the flavors, but I think I like that maple one the You're best so far. This way. You're blocking me. 
You blocking me. You blocking me. I can't see. There you go. All right. I'm doing a karate block. Just yeah. <laughs> cock blocking me. <laughs> You're cock blocking. Cock blocking. Me. <laughs> I'm gonna take something bigger than that. <laughs> no, that's okay. I was talking shit. Man. I no. guess so. Yeah, I know. Like I said, it started really early. Yeah. Um, and I would also like to thank our newest patron, whose name is Holly. She just came on in the yep, past thanks, couple Holly. of days, so yep. thank you very much, and welcome to our Patreon page. And we really appreciate all of you guys' contributions. Patrons, patrons get early access. They and do. I put everything up a day before. And if you're $20 or more, we send you a free shirt every quarter. Yeah. yeah. The next one... Made by me. And I made this one, too. Yeah. I'm going to plug uh, Obscura Undead. Yeah. Friends of ours who are uh, DJs. Yeah. Doing goth music uh, reviews. DJ Album Mouse reviews. and one other DJ. I can't remember yeah. who it is. But they're out of Tampa, based out of Tampa. Mouse will be over here Friday to pick up the rest of her shirts. Yeah, because we made her a bunch of those yeah. shirts. And she's going to come over Friday and pick them up because mm -hmm. she's playing... A gig here, isn't she? Mm -hmm. She's DJing here in Orlando. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, I think that's probably all the shout outs, right? Because I said I think that. think so. Yeah, because I said the book will be done, you know, in a couple of months and, or okay. at least by the end of next month. So, you ready to do this case? <sighs> I'm ready. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm interested to hear, like, what your theories are. I don't know anything about it. About this. So, just, no, I'm, I'm going to lay out the story. I have a lot of details about this. So, okay. like, don't rush me through the shit. So, I'm not so, going to rush you. I'm going to set the scene. I'm not going to rush you. Set the scene. All right. So, this happened, it started out in Boston. Now, the victim of this crime was a 50-year-old woman named Judy Smith. Uh, she was a home care nurse. Very successful at her job, actually. Um, as far as I could determine, she was so loved at some of her jobs that, you know, because home care nurse, you know, you, you stay yeah. in the house with the family, like taking care of people, like long-term care and stuff like that. I mean, she, one of the families that she um, worked for invited her to like Thailand with them, hmm. like to, with, the, with the family. So yeah. she was like... She got close enough to these families that she was, like, very close to them. So I'm just saying she was she seemed like a very nice woman. She was very good at her job. So she lived in a part, kind of a ritzy area of Boston with her husband, Jeffrey. Now, he was her third husband. Uh, he was a corporate lawyer, I believe. He was a lawyer of some kind. I believe he was a corporate lawyer. Now, Judy had two kids from, I think, her first marriage. They were grown. And Jeffrey also had, uh, I believe, a daughter who was older teenage or early 20s uh, from his first marriage. Now, they had actually met uh, 10 years before in 1987, I guess, because Judy had been hired to take care of Jeffrey's dad after his dad had like a, he had the, like a tumor in his neck and he had to have it removed. You know, he had like cancer. And so he was like bedridden for a long time. So she was the home, the home health care nurse. And I guess, you know, while she was taking care of the dad, like her and Jeffrey fell in love. And um, so they dated for like a really long time, lived together for a few years, and they had just got married in September of 1996. Now, only a few months later, they decide they're going to take like kind of a big trip together. It's April 9th, 1997. Now, they're both going to Logan International Airport in Boston. They're going to go to Philadelphia. Jeffrey is involved um, and might have been like one of the sort of like organizers of it. There's like a big three day like pharmaceutical um, conference or something like that there. It sounds like super boring, but whatever. Yeah. So he like represented this big pharmaceutical company. So he was going to go and he was like supposed to like, you know, uh, mediate some of the panels and they had all these sessions and you know kids corporate conference kind of shit so he's going to be there for three days now judy has never been to philadelphia before and you know they have money so she's like hey well you know i'll buy a ticket and i'll tag along with you and i'll do some sightseeing while you're you know doing your conference shit because i'm not going to do that so she wants you know she wants to go around the city and see everything so and then they said well you know after the the a uh, conference was only three days. I think it started on a, it was like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday or something. And then they said, oh, we'll just pop over to New Jersey after because it's not very far. Uh, they had some friends there and they were going to stay with their friends over the weekend. So they had this whole like big trip planned and shit. 
So they get to the airport, and Judy discovers that she has forgotten her driver's license. Now, it's it, it's interesting, like, nowadays, obviously, you can't go anywhere without your fucking driver's license, especially not on a plane. Um, in 1997, it actually happened that it had only been about 18 months since they had made it, like, that you had to show an ID to get on the plane. So I guess, like, even into the 90s, I didn't even remember this, even into the, like, mid-90s, you could still conceivably get on an airplane without showing anyone your ID, which is kind of scary. Yeah, it's weird. But I guess you could, you because... you ticket, you could get on. Yeah, because they, they were like, well, you bought a ticket, and you obviously didn't, like, hit anyone over the head and take it, so no, I guess... that time, you used to take guns on the airplanes. Well, you used to Not... be able to smoke on airplanes. Yeah, you used smoke... to be able to do all kind of crazy shit. You didn't... Have it in the overhead storage compartment, but you could put your guns in the baggage and they'd put it up underneath the... Uh, underneath the plane, yeah. The so plane. you couldn't get to it. Like, couldn't get to it, the, but yeah. While the plane was going. But yeah, you couldn't do that now. I don't think. No. I don't well, think you can transport. I don't think you can transport a firearm in there anymore. Um, You might be able to, but it might. I'm sure there's like a whole bunch of procedures like, you have to do procedures to make, about yes. it. Because I mean, I think you can pretty much transport anything as long as you like do the protocols correctly and all this other kind of shit. Oh, good. But she, um, yeah. So she didn't have her ID, and she didn't think they were going to let her on the plane. So she's like, "Well, shit, I'm going to have to go all the way back home and get, you know, and get it, and we're going to miss the flight." Now Jeffrey had to. He had to be in Philadelphia that afternoon because he was supposed to be on some panels or he had some sessions or some shit at the conference that he had to do. So they were kind of like, okay, well, Jeffrey is just going to go ahead to Philadelphia and then Judy was going to go home, pick up her ID, and then she was going to come back to the airport and try to get a later flight. And then they were going to meet up because they already had hotel reservations and all that other kind of stuff. So they thought that that would all work out. It was the Doubletree Hotel in Center City, Philadelphia. So that seemed to have gone uh, as they planned. And I say seemed, which will become clear later on. She goes home and gets her ID, comes back. She catches a 7.30 flight to Philadelphia and supposedly arrives in Philadelphia at around 10 p.m. Now, apparently she had even brought Jeffrey some flowers, I guess, to say, hey, I'm sorry I fucked up and I, you know, we were supposed to come here together and blah, blah, blah. Like I made a mistake and so she felt really bad about it. So then they just apparently went to bed. I don't know because, you know, there was I went on a bunch of like web forums about this where everybody was like arguing about these little details about the case and everything. But um, I'm not sure. I'm assuming that her luggage just went ahead to Philadelphia ahead of her. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm imagining they already had it on the plane. If he went and he just took her luggage with him and she just came back with a carry on. I'm assuming. I don't know if that's really what happened or not. So the next morning. Uh, Jeffrey gets up uh, a long time before Judy did. He goes down and eats breakfast because, you know, hotels, they give you that free breakfast bar and all that other kind of stuff, which is nice. Yeah, you don't miss out on that shit, man. No, of course you don't. It's you like, that's get, pretty much the some, only time I'll get up early. You get some free eggs. <laughs> no. Yeah. Shit, man. Some of the, some of the man, hotels... Man. Yeah, they got uh, they got all kind of good shit now. Yeah. They had grits. They got a, like a fucking waffle bar. They got fucking crepes and pancakes and all kind of shit. You got people on there who don't know what grits are. Grits. Yeah, whatever that comes, it comes off the grit tree. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's out of the grit plant. Summer. Yeah. <laughs> grits are in season. <laughs> <laughs> you guys never had grits. You know, we're Southerners. We fucking love grits. Grits are very divisive, I feel. You got to know what to do with grits. Grits are made out of hominy. Hominy is, you know, corn. You know, like, it's almost like the corn that you feed cattle. Yeah. Put that into a bucket, a whole bunch of water, or a big, a big 50-gallon oil drum full of water and throw lye in lye, it and it yeah. starts to expand and be like popcorn. Yeah. And that's called hominy. A few people don't know. Then you drain that, you take that out and you kind of beat it into a kind of like a polenta. I guess yeah. I guess that's a good way you say it. Yeah, that is a good way of putting it. Like a polenta, man, it's looking good. But then you then you, uh, you can dry it too, you know, you can re-dry it and then, you know, so when you get grits, they're not wet. They're not ready. They're, they, it looks like cornmeal. Yeah. Exactly what it looks like. You it's rehydrated. Like, it's good. It's but like you gotta put meat and cheese yeah, you and spices. Put stuff you gotta it. put stuff in it. I mean, you can't just eat a plain. They're not bad, but they don't really taste like. They don't much taste of like much, right? Yeah. I mean, we, you know, my grandmother, she would put sugar in hers. <coughs> yeah. Um, the, it's essentially. I was gonna say it's like oatmeal, but it's not quite. It's more like cream of wheat. Yeah. It's like a similar. You know what I mean? If you've had cream of wheat, I Your like grandma that too. putting sugar in it. 
That's but it's same, corn that's, instead yeah, of wheat. That's the same way black people eat it in, in Mississippi, with sugar. Yeah. So that's where she got that idea. Yeah. Yeah. She always ate it with sugar. You're right. I like it with salt and pepper and butter. Cheese. Yeah. And then, like, break up a bunch of little bacon. Throw, make bacon bits, fresh bacon bits in it. You see, we've, I make it. I yeah, make we've it. put hard-boiled eggs in hard-boiled there. Like, eggs. chopped up hard-boiled yeah, eggs yeah, in just there. everything. Just but really, I mean, if you're going to have it plain, yeah, like, just salt, pepper, and, like, a shit ton of butter. Yeah. Really good. So we got a lot of people, like, in Australia and England. But don't you know? eat them plain, though. No, That's... don't eat them plain. They have a lot. Of, we have, we got, and, and here's another thing is that you can't store them. You got to eat them all. Because as soon as you put them in once the refrigerator, cooked. once soon, yeah, as soon as they're, as soon as, as soon as they get cold, they just set up like concrete. Yeah, it's just like a you concrete block. <laughs> you can't really reactivate them lo- like it was. No, you can't have leftovers. No. Because sometimes, like every now and then, we'll want some, and he'll make like a big pot of grits, yeah. and then he'll put like cheese and eggs and like bacon bits and stuff like that in it. And it's you so can. much, but you have to eat it all, or it's yeah. gonna go to waste. You're gonna have to re-add water or or or, or milk. I don't even it. think that's gonna work. I've gotten it back to where it was where it was kind of like. I mean, it's still kind of lumpy, but still kind of lumpy. It's not as good. So if you're in England or in Australia <laughs> and you want to Europe somewhere, you know, and you want to try some real fucking honky food, man. You, <laughs> Order some grits and learn how to make it. It's good. Also, it's shrimp, big old um, shrimp and grits is, like, is grits. like a big oh, thing yeah, yeah. here, too. Like a Cajun version. Like of Cajun, yeah, yeah. That's really good, Cause, also. Because it's also good with crawfish tails. It is, yeah. You, you, but you, it takes forever to get down meat out of a crawfish. But like you said, it's like, it's not, you know, people pick on Southerners. It's like, oh, grits, they're so gross oh, and everything. Know what doing. But like you said, I mean, it's not really that different from cream of wheat or polenta or something yeah. like It's pretty much the same thing as that. It's yeah. just corn. It's just a, yeah, it's just our version of it. And honestly, my, you know what? My grandmother would even eat white hominy just right out of the can. Yeah, hominy's good if you know what to do with it, too. You know, hot, Of course, she'd I mean, also eat calves' brains and scrambled eggs. Uh, so. Nah, I'm not, not Yeah, I'm me. like, not yeah, me. I'm not going there. Mm. You know, I'll eat most things, but. <laughs> I, I kind of draw the line at brains Fully and Fully like loaded grits with hard stuff. boiled eggs. Yeah, in it's the good. Dam- it's real good. In the bowl with it. Yeah. Eat it with a spoon. Man. I know now he's like, he's making Shattered himself cheese. hungry now. Yeah. <laughs> Shattered cheese, salt, pepper. <laughs> we, have, we have huge bags of grits. Real there. bacon bits. Mm. <laughs> it Dude. is good. It's like, yeah. it's really all you need to eat all day though. Because yeah. it's like, that's really good. It's very, High it's very filling. Make you fat. It's very filling. Make you fucking fat. I even like those instant ones, man. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, I'll even eat those. It's not bad. Just throw like half a stick of butter in there. If you want to go delicious. real old school Southern, you make red eye gravy with that. But yeah. You need a ham bone. Yeah. You need a ham bone. You can get a ham bone gravy. at Win Dixie. Yeah. You need a ham bone for that. At least you used to be able to. I mean, I can yeah. assume you still can. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So it was <laughs> every time. Let's get off his food. Every time we like go is because all I said it. all I said was. He went down to, to eat the free breakfast and then yeah, we go off. Yeah, yeah. We Chris. really need to do like a food show. Yeah, yeah. Because it seems like every time we mention anything to do with food, it's like we go on this I big go long sideways tangent. on that shit. <laughs> we go this big long Damn. Tangent. Well, because he cooks and like, yeah. you know. Yeah, so he's got like a lot of good recipes. Yeah. So, okay. So he goes down, takes advantage of the free breakfast. I don't know. I'm assuming he probably ate a lot because... Uh, he, he's kind of a big fat dude. But, um, yeah, so he goes down there. He comes back to the room at about 9 in the morning, and his wife, according to him, was awake and was in the shower. And he's like, oh, breakfast was really good. You should go down there and get some. And she's like, oh, I'm going to go down like I am. I'm all wet and naked. Ha, ha, ha. You know, and so they were, like, joking about it. So then he leaves the room. Now, here's where stuff starts getting weird. So... Okay, so he leaves the room and starts going and doing his shit at the conference. Now, what Judy had planned to do, or at least what she told him she had planned to do, was that she was going to go sightseeing around the city. She's like, I want to see the Liberty Bell, specifically. I want to see Independence Hall. Now, if you've ever been to Philadelphia, I've only been one time, and that was a very long time ago, but they actually have a bus service called the Flash PH. F, no, P-H-L-A-S-H. That's what I was trying to spell. Yeah. Um, and it goes around to, like, all the tourists. You know, you just get on it. It's well, like one of those tourist buses where you can get on it at any point. It'll take you to, like, all the tourist shit in the city. So they had one of those. So she was apparently going to do that. So the couple says, all right, well, I'm going to do go do my thing. You go do your thing. And we'll meet back here 
between like five and five thirty, because apparently like the conference, the pharmaceutical conference was having like a big cocktail hour, a big cocktail party at 6 PM. And he was supposed to go to it and she was going to go with him. So they were going to come back to the room and change and, you know, go to the party. So Jeffrey goes and does his shit and he comes back to the room at about five thirty that afternoon and notices that Judy is not there. Now, This didn't alarm him at first. Uh, He was probably like, oh, you know, maybe she just lost track of time out sightseeing or whatever. He's like, or perhaps uh, she forgot what our plan was. She came back to the room earlier. She changed and went down to the cocktail party already because it was in, you know, just one of the conference rooms in the same hotel. So he says, well, I'll just go get changed and I'll go down to the party and see if I can find her. So he goes down there to the party. And he doesn't see her. And he's asking around because some of his colleagues were there and they knew her, you know, or at least knew what she looked like. They're like, yeah, man, we haven't seen her. You know, she hasn't been here. So he kept going back and forth, like from the room to the party. And then she wasn't there. So finally, he's like, okay, he thinks something bad has happened. So he goes out on the street and he gets a cab And he tells the cab to follow the route that the flash bus would have taken, like, you know, just follow it very slowly and he's like and i'm just gonna like look out the window and look for her because maybe she's still like wandering around the street somewhere or something like that so they did that and they also did not see any sign of her he also called um their kids you know she had two kids and they were grown up but you know and he had one kid so he called them and he said you know call our house you know let's see if there's any uh messages on our answering machines like maybe she called the house and said something like she was going someplace um you know none of the kids had heard from her there were no messages on the phone nothing like that so about midnight he's like okay well i'm gonna report her missing because this is not like her so he goes to the police station and he says i want to report my wife missing and the police were kind of like nah Because it hadn't been 24 hours. You know how they do, like, in some cities, they're just like, well, if they're a grown-up person, if it hasn't been 24 hours, you can't file a missing person report because they figure, well, the person just wandered off of their own volition. And according to Jeffrey Smith, he's like, they were kind of pretty um, dismissive about his concerns. They were just kind of like, oh, you know how 50-year-old women do? Like, they have these you know, midlife crises or something and just decide to like wander off and not tell anyone where they're going. So I guess they didn't really think it was, they were like no big, you know, she'll probably be back or whatever. And uh, he was uh, kind of upset about this because this was apparently not something that his wife would have done. So he goes back to the hotel. Like I said, he's kind of a, you know, high placed lawyer. And at this conference, it so happened that there were two um, kind of colleagues of his, one of whom happened to be the mayor of Philadelphia, and uh, another of whom happened to be a member of the Philadelphia House of Representatives. So he goes in there and he's like, you guys, you know, I'm trying to like, you know, my wife's missing and I'm trying to report her missing and the police are just kind of being like, nah, bro. And they're kind of like brushing me off about it. So can you guys like put in a word, you know? So they apparently did. Now, he waited a couple of hours, but then he went back to the police station, like, early the next morning. And even though it hadn't been 24 hours, he's like, oh, they were much more receptive. So I guess, like, the mayor had called and be like, don't be such a dick. What the fuck? You know, yeah. help it, help the guy out. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, again, this is where it gets weird. So this woman has, like, disappeared. So then they start interviewing... You know, other people that were at the conference, people that worked at the hotel, people that, like, were just wandering around the street that day or whatever. You know, they're trying to find out, like, what the timeline was, like, where this woman went. Because apparently, according to Jeffrey Smith, the last time that he had seen her, she was in the shower at about 9 a.m. at the hotel room. And she had said she was going to go out sightseeing, and then nothing ever came of the lake. Nobody saw her. Hmm. Now... So they ask um, some of the employees at the Doubletree Hotel where they were staying. Now, according to one desk clerk, he said that Judy had come up to him like in like the late morning uh, of April 10th, which I'm assuming was like 10 or 11 o'clock and said, where's the best place to catch the flash bus? Which, you know, that was that jived with what she was uh, planning on doing. Um, They one of the drivers of uh, the flash bus or one of the routes also said, yeah, I think I saw her. Like, I picked her up 
um, at the intersection of Front Street and South Street, like fairly early in the afternoon. And then uh, he said, later in the day, I dropped her off near the hotel, like near the Doubletree. Um, another employee um, or another uh, person that was attending the same conference as Jeffrey uh, said that he had thought he saw her in the lobby on that day. Although he said, I can't be quite sure because I don't really know her that well. And he's like, when I kind of saw her from far away, but I'm pretty sure it was her. So some people did seem to see her in the hotel. Cause like I said, there's later on, like as the investigation went on, there was some uh, speculation that maybe she had never even come to Philadelphia and had disappeared like earlier. And then her husband was like trying to cover it up or something like that. So apparently there were some people that saw her in Philadelphia. Um, some people on the street also said that they had seen a woman that looked like her going into the Philadelphia Greyhound bus terminal and then coming back out a few minutes later. Now, they didn't think there was a lot of significance to that. They said maybe she just went in there to use the bathroom or something like that. Um, also, they said it was interesting because where the Greyhound bus terminal was, they said it was real close to Philadelphia's Chinatown. And they said that sounds like somewhere she would be because Judy Smith was like super into like Thai food and Chinese food. And every time she traveled to a new city, she always like looked for Chinese restaurants and Thai restaurants. So that seemed like somewhere she would be. Although they did interview like pretty much all the people that were like worked in the restaurants and stuff like that. And they said that they had not seen her, whether that's the case or not. I don't know. Now, there were also some sightings of her that were decidedly weirder. Although they're not quite sure if these were actually her or not. Now, there were staff members at this other hotel called the Society Hill Hotel that wasn't that far away. And they said that they're like, yeah, this woman that looked like Judy Smith stayed here from the 13th to the 15th. And she had checked in under a different name, HK Rich Collins. And they said, we remembered this woman specifically because she was acting like a lunatic. They said she was uh, speaking in tongues. She was masturbating in front of a window. Damn. And she said that... that shit on video. <laughs> yes, this is 1997, <laughs> so I don't know <laughs> if they had that back then. <laughs> but yeah, so... Uh, and she apparently told the desk clerk that well, I'm going to extend my stay, but I'm waiting for somebody that she called the emperor yeah. to wire me more money. Yeah, Trump. <laughs> so I don't know what that was all the about. The emperor, huh? That's ridiculous. Yeah, so, so... This sounds like a damn brain hemorrhage. Well, yeah, that, that's what I mean. If these or are her, tumor. that's then that might be the case. But yeah. this is going to get weirder before okay. it gets... So okay. I, I'm not really sure what to think. Okay. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> yeah, so there were some other sightings <laughs> of a woman who looked a lot like her. Yeah. And she also, she was walking around the intersection okay. of uh, Locust Street and Broad Street, and she appeared disoriented. This was around 3 p.m. on the afternoon of April 10th, when Judy Smith would have been walking around sightseeing. Now, she's 50, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um... Other you know, I know why I'm asking that. Why? Well, the audience doesn't know this, but man, we knew a girl at the club who was not even maybe 30. You'd look at her, you know, she was just t real tall, long blonde hair, good looking girl. Seemed totally normal. And then we just hear, she's dead. Brain brain tumor. Yep. And there 29. Was this, she was 29. 29. No warning. She had been sickly, but I don't know if it was specifically that. Yeah. And I don't think they knew that she had a brain tumor, did they? No, not in Because no. at that age, they wouldn't check for anything like that. No, that's like she alarming. Just, and like yeah. I said, I think I mentioned this maybe on one of our other shows, but I had an uncle yeah. <coughs> that died of a brain tumor when he was 32. Yeah. It does happen. It's very rare. And then there was that other guy, that guy who was that old goth dude that was the ex-DJ. He was younger than me. He was walking around normal, and then just a few weeks later, I said, man, that motherfucker's getting skinny. And the, Remember? remember, And then yeah. just dead. Yep. Dead. Scary. Right after, yeah, it didn't take It does long. happen. Same thing. Brain tumor. Yeah. Yeah. We're old enough to where we start knowing people who are dying. That shit have fucking shaken your foundations. Well, and two, you start of, our, seeing people two of our you, friends this year got cancer. Got cancer, and they're young. Yeah. 
Well, one is one 50, is fi- one 52, but the other one is only very 30 something. Yeah, and she's like a local goth club hottie girl who's I think always she's only 33 maybe. dancing up on you look at her yeah, she's stomach, just she's got stomach cancer yeah beautiful you know you, she's up there dancing you know in skimpy outfits you know she's just like a go-go dancer and the next thing you know you find out she's just eating up with cancer yep man it's kind of like that alex jones stuff about they're putting stuff in the water and they're trying to kill us with cell phone radiation makes you wonder man it makes you i mean people die they just, they do. Well, yeah, and like I but said... What are the statistics? It's unusual um, for someone that young. And like I said, I mean, yeah, it's weird that somebody we know was that young, and it's weird that my uncle did that, but in general, most people that die of cancer I had older. a theory. I already told Jenny, we were, we were driving one time. I had this theory. In the middle, in the lower middle class, they have these old houses that they live in. They were built, a lot of them were built in the 50s, 60s, 70s. They weren't really built for central air. And it and a lot of them are just running window units. And it makes me wonder if lack of proper ventilation is somehow killing a lot of people early here. Because you never know in this heat and this humidity of what could build up inside of a house. Like, yeah. like little mold spores. Well, yeah, mold and, and, will kill you for sure. Yeah, because, you know, we, you go into one of those houses and, you know... I always, always, the first thing that I always fucking, I noticed was like the smell of mold. Yeah. In all of those old houses. And it doesn't necessarily, you know, I'm not saying, you know, they're dirty or anything. You know, those people are dirty. It's because they, they just weren't built with modern central air. Yeah. And it makes and me And we warm. live in Florida. We live and in Florida. it's like everything is swampy and this humid is fucking all Dagobah. the time. This is Dagobah. Okay. Yeah, essentially. The X wings right out back. Essentially. Okay. X wings out back. Seriously, okay. I'm in. We're in an air conditioned house. Yeah. I get out of the shower yeah. and immediately start sweating. Yeah. It's you well, can't escape it. Got a badass air conditioner, and uh, in the in the heat of the in the heat of the summer day, in, in, in the hottest parts of the summer, you're not going to get it below seventy four. Yeah. And in here, you can have that air conditioner. Your that air central, conditioner will blow up. You can have that central air <laughs> turn wide up, wide open, and you're not going to get it below 74. Well, shit. I keep it set on 71 all year round, and it still doesn't. It just it doesn't matter. Shit, it just, we used to like the the old air condition that I used to have, like in the house where my family grew up. It would break every year because it just couldn't yeah, yeah, take it. It's it just running so hard. It just to try to keep the house cool. Yeah, and I have a. Uh, Four window units and another uh, one that can go indoors that can exhaust out. They work like shit. They don't work. And, and I have four of those in the garage in case we lose air conditioning. Yeah, because we had that happen a couple if times. If you lose power, you lose air conditioning. And I got generators out there to fucking to power the house. Because last couple of years we had hurricanes. The storms. Yeah, I got a nice and, Honda generator. And the power went out. Nice new Honda generator. And, and if you lose power <laughs> in a house, in a modern house like this, and and you don't have air conditioning, in four hours it smells like a fucking swamp in here. Yeah. Because of the humidity. You remember a bacteria couple, just fucking goes yeah. crazy. You remember all the a couple of years ago? It might have been two or three years ago when we had those hurricanes and the power was out for several days. Yeah, and uh, we didn't have the generator then. Um, and remember, we were filling the tub with ice and yeah. sleeping in. the Oh tub. yeah, yeah, that first storm we went through. Yeah. Yep. And then I got that other generator, Super and that fun. generator ran like shit. And I had to eventually. Remember, I was nursing that generator yeah. through that storm for about four days. I know, we were like, oh, finally got my hands on one of the good fucking Honda generators. That bitch was about four thousand uh, dollars, man. Yeah. I could power this house, the whole house, with the fucking yeah, like, two refrigerators. We just didn't want to go through that. Don't. It's not worth it. Here is not to have AC in a modern house is like death. Well, and the plus, ceilings aren't high enough. Well, and plus, like. So much like because we shop at Sam's like once a month, yeah. so if the power goes out, we we lose like five hundred dollars worth of food. You, you know? have to keep you have to keep all the refrigerators going. Yeah, and yeah. we so yeah we have two refrigerators and all those window units. Yeah, and you got to put window units in in this house to and it, and it won't get cold really. It's just that it won't get. It'll just like it, keep you from having keep a heat stroke. Right. Yeah, <laughs> four window units will probably keep this place at about eighty five. 
You there, mean. Yeah, there. It's like there are some things that I like about Florida, but yeah. that's one thing. And I was born here. You think I'd yeah. be used to it? You never get used to it. I've always hated the. I I hate hot weather. I, I don't like it. summer. I stay indoors most of the summer. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I still I still do my walks and stuff, but I I try to do them like early in the morning, yeah. like before it gets too bad. Yeah, and you know. We'd have friends come from fucking Europe, you know, England and stuff, and they, for some reason they love the heat. They love it because they're not used to it. Weirdos. They're fucking weird. We had this girl come visit us, and she was fucking wearing whole fucking dresses and jackets, and it was in the dead of the dead of the fucking summer. Yeah, she keep like July or August crazy. or something. I said, I said, it's like four hundred degrees wear that. out there. Take that. Yeah, she had a yeah, jacket. She was all on. dressed up like she was downtown London or some shit like that. I'm You're like, you Florida. were gonna pass out. Yeah. Oh, it's not bad. It keeps the heat out. They're like, no, no. But I guess because <laughs> they don't live in it, yeah, it's just like a couple of days of an excursion. It's kind of like I guess if you're used to like shitty, cold, rainy weather, yeah, it's like, like going oh, into the sauna. Like, oh, this is great. Yeah, it's like going this to the sauna great. for a couple yeah, yeah. of days. Just, but you yeah. don't want to live in the yeah. sauna. But so, we do. Yeah, it eventually wears you out. <laughs> yeah, you just yeah. it just makes you tired. You don't yeah. have to like do anything. It just makes you tired. You don't even have to go outside, really. Mm-mm. It's just, it makes you tired. I'm so much more energetic, like, in the, and it doesn't even really get that cold here in the wintertime. Like, I'm always hoping that it'll get we cold. We can almost, like, hibernate during the summer. Pretty much. Stay in the house and just do work, housework. Yeah. Yeah. Make it's, an excuse not to go outside. Yeah, it's like, do we really have to go to the yeah. grocery store? Fuck that. I'll just see a granola bar. It's like that damn movie. That sweet, <laughs> it's that Swedish apocalypse movie where they can't go outside and they got all the damn glasses on and the hoods and shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that movie. I can't yeah, because the name. ultraviolet radiation would kill you. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's like that. that's like our life every day. Yeah. At least during the summer, it's not bad. In in the winter, it's actually yeah. pretty nice. It's a little too warm for my taste still, but yeah. You know. All right. So, as I said, there were some sightings of this of a woman that looked like Judy Smith walking around, like in the kind of touristy areas, looking as though she was disoriented. Uh, this apparently the same woman was seen uh, also appearing disoriented, walking around Penn's Landing. Um, and another guy, there was a homeless guy in the area. And when the cop showed him a picture of Judy, he said, yeah, that woman slept on a bench next to me on April 14th, like overnight, April 14th. Hmm. Now, something that complicates the situation though, is that there was a fairly well-known homeless woman who lived in Philadelphia at the time, like on the streets. And she looked a lot like Judy Smith. Like she, she was about red, the same age. Like she, she was kind of heavy set, like she Judy might Smith have a was. Red herring out there. Yeah, and she was blonde. She had like the similar similar kind of haircut. Yeah. Um, and from what I've read, she looked so much like Judy Smith that like when uh, her son came to Philadelphia, like to help the you know the dad like in the search and everything like that. He actually thought he saw his mom like across the street, like he was looking out a window, but it was actually this homeless woman. So. So, like I said, she did look a lot like him. It should be noted, though, that even though there was this homeless woman going around that supposedly looked so much like Judy Smith that, you know, the son couldn't tell the difference, at least from across the street, the homeless man that they asked, the one that said, yeah, Judy Smith, you know, slept on a bench next to me on August 14th, she, he said, no, I know that homeless woman. It wasn't her. It was this other woman that you showed me a picture of. So take that however you want to take it so like i said i don't know how many of these sightings were her and how many were not her you know what i mean because there was that whole complicating issue of this kind of look alike this doppelganger that she had walking around the street now over the ensuing days there were also some other sightings of her that were like farther away so this one woman that worked at a macy's in deptford new jersey said, yeah, Judy was in here shopping for dresses. And she's like, and I talked to her. She didn't seem, like, distressed. She didn't seem like there was anything wrong with her. She said that she was buying a dress for her daughter and then kind of made a joke about, oh, you know, my daughter never likes anything that I buy for her. Now, when the retail clerk said that to the family, like, when the family found out about that, they said, yeah, that sounds like something that Judy would do and that sounds like something that she would say. Now, this woman also said, and I'm not sure, like, what the outcome of this was, but she's like, this woman that had said, I'm buying a dress for my daughter, she's like, she attempted to get a younger woman, 
presumably her daughter, to leave the store with her. And I'm assuming that because she said attempted, that maybe she was not successful. Like she tried to get a girl to leave the store with her and it didn't work out. So that maybe meant. that, yeah. So that was pretty weird too. Yeah. Now it should be noted that, I mean, it sounds like, oh, it's Deptford, New Jersey, but I mean, Philadelphia and New Jersey, you know, and Deptford, New Jersey are not that far apart. Um, and there's actually, you can get a bus from Philadelphia, uh, New Jersey transit bus route 400, which goes right to Deptford, New Jersey, and you can get there, like, in a pretty short amount of time. So they're like, it's possible that she might have just, like, caught a bus to Macy's in New Jersey for whatever reason. They did have friends in New Jersey, but I don't know if it was, if that's where the friends were. So um, somebody else spotted who they thought was Judy in Easton, Pennsylvania, which is about 50 miles away from Philadelphia. Uh, that was a few days after the disappearance. Another guy who was driving to work at about 6 a.m. a few days after her disappearance also saw her. He said she appeared to be well-dressed and she was sitting in front of a gourmet grocery store in Philadelphia at around mm. 6 a.m., which he thought was very weird because I guess the grocery store wasn't open yet and she was like sitting on the sidewalk in front of it. Hmm. So I don't know if that was her either, but he said it looked a lot like her. All this talk about food and, gro and grocery stores, gourmet grocery stores, <laughs> make me wonder what was on the menu in that place, man. <laughs> it was probably like a Whole Foods if they yeah. had those back in the 90s. Oh, yeah, they did. Like fancy groups. I mean, yeah. we, we only just started getting them down here like a few years ago, yeah, but I think man. they had them in other parts of the Making country. Making me hungry. You're always hungry. Making me hungry. Go ahead. I just see you're all over. <laughs> so, all right. So, obviously, they have no idea where this woman has gone. Uh, Jeffrey Smith, the husband, he spends a lot of his own money, like, over the ensuing several months. Um, he hired three separate private investigators. Um, he made thousands and thousands and thousands of flyers with his wife's picture on there and faxed them to pretty much every police station and hospital in America, as far as I know. Um, so, you know, so everyone got one. Now... It should be noted that because in 85, 90% of cases where a woman disappears, um, usually it's something to do with her husband or boyfriend or whoever. So police were looking askance at Jeffrey Smith, even from the beginning, thinking that maybe he was involved. Like I said, there was even some speculation that she hadn't even come to Philadelphia at all and that like maybe he had killed her beforehand and then set this whole thing up like as an alibi. So there was a whole bunch of other kind of shit about that too. But, you know, they didn't have enough, there didn't really seem to be any reason for him to do anything like that. And at this point they had not found her. Now, they didn't find her until September 7th, 1997. Now, there was a father and son who were out deer hunting, out of season, so naughty, naughty. Yeah, that's poaching. <laughs> in, and I don't Wait, know... What if, state was this? They It was actually North Carolina. Poaching in North Carolina. Yeah. They must be very tolerant over there. You can't poach in Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama. You can do some serious fucking time. Yeah, I don't know, like, if these guys ended up doing any time for this or not it's like but you know they found a body so i guess they figured they yeah. should come forward yeah you know if you, people living outside the united states you can't just go hunting in the united states well, you can if it's varmint maybe they were just hunting varmint were they hunting deer deer they were hunting deer okay only certain times of the year you can do that you need a license you need permission yeah and uh the license is only good for that year well yeah any kind, any kind of like this well, kind of like large game animals like yeah that. Although it may depend, I think you can buy licenses that last. You can buy them that'll cover several seasons. But I would and think. there's things called game wardens, so they're they're cops. They have more power than a cop. They can go into your house without a warrant and check your freezer and see if you have game meat in there. Yeah. They can do a whole forensic exam to see if that came from a deer. Try to figure out where that came from and, and what. They just be I, like, I, uh, my yeah. neighbor gave it to me. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't shoot anybody. Yeah. 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 So, uh, you know, as long as you follow the rules, you can pretty much do what you want. But you can't just do whatever you want. Well, I hope you not. Gotta, <laughs> you got to give those deer a rest, man. you got to give them a rest. You don't want to hunt them out. You know, you, you're you cultivating them. 
Well, yeah, You're letting it's, them grow it's in large pretty numbers. closely managed. It's managed, I mean, right. you know, in pretty much every state that I know of. Yeah. At least where hunting is a thing. It's, it, it, there's a lot of misconceptions about it. It's very much kind of like a more humane version of, in terms of the deer. It's a more humane version of, say, raising cattle. Raising cattle, they're raised in captivity. The deer are raised in the wild. You get permission to go out and hunt certain ones. And yeah. you're just culling off a top. Yeah. You know, you're looking for males that have already reproduced. Yeah. And the females live a long time. Because those are your baby machines. Well, yeah. You know. Females so. are more valuable. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they, they are. Yeah. It, it, so. Because they can have babies. And there are so many. They're hunting deer. And they're hunting deer here in Florida. There are so many deer here. It's not even funny. I see them all the time. She sees them all. They're, they're almost a nuisance. You can hit them with your motorcycle, your cars. You know, it'll kill you if you hit them on a motorcycle. It'll I almost fuck hit one with my car one morning on the way to work. Yeah, they yeah, almost need to start hunting them down here to get rid of them. There's just too many, too damn many of them. I saw one the other morning. I saw um, mm. I saw a doe and a little fawn the other yeah. day just hanging out in somebody's yard mm. when I was out for a walk. But we're Some not. Some are just like walking down the path, man. They're just yeah, trucking along. Yeah, probably blow <laughs> Europeans' mind. I know because the Europeans, especially over in England, those little islands, they've eaten every fucking thing over the centuries. <laughs> really, no animals there. Well, no know. big animals. No big animals. Here, they're, they're just fucking everywhere, and we're hunting them. We're, we see bear in our neighborhood. In our big, driveway. In our driveway. <laughs> big old black bear. You know, we're, We've seen deer in our... Well, there was a deer with a broken leg in our backyard. on was, our back porch. I was tempted to shoot it, to put it out of its misery. Yeah, it's, it's but like it was messed up. I called, I called them, and I didn't have permission to do that. Yeah. They just said just... They've been trying to catch it. Yeah. Uh, and... They said it could still walk, but it was it was dangling a fucking. Up, yeah. It got hit by a car, and they said, "Ah, oh, just let it die." And I said, "Man, that's a." And it was all fucking getting infected and rotten. Yeah. And I said, "Man, that is a slow, painful death." And they just says, "Yeah, but that's that's just nature, you know." I know. And I, it felt I, I, so I was, bad. I mean, it's like because yeah. I looked out our sliding glass yeah. window and I'm like, "Holy crap! There's a deer and it's sitting right there. It was yeah. right there. It was literally like two feet." Yeah. From our. I was back hit, window. I had a pistol shot. You could have killed that with a twenty five. I know. Or a three eighty. Yeah. Then she like she kinda got spooked and like kind of hobbled off yeah. like when we went out there to see what was going on. Yeah. But Yeah, but the United States is just fucking you know you have people in New York and California, they never see an animal and they think that fucking oh the, all the animals are dying. No, they're fucking all here in Florida. They're fucking everywhere. Yeah, deer, bears, bunnies, deer, bear, armadillos. Fucking, armadillos. Tortoises. Possums. You know, I've, possums. I've, I've, raccoons. I've, yeah. I've, <laughs> shit tons of squirrels. With the squirrels, just a damn tree rat. And, you know. I, I, bobcats. Bobcats. Snakes. Alligators. Yeah. <laughs> and we're in the suburbs. Yeah. So that should tell you something. It, yeah, we're not like in a city city. No, but we're, we're in the suburbs. We're in a pretty built up area. And this, the, nature's doing fine. Nature's doing very fine. Yeah. And, you know, I've seen things in Mississippi that weren't supposed to be there, like coyote. That's supposed to be something out west. You see coyote. You know, remember, I told you my coyote story. Yeah. I shot that coyote, and it lived. And then my dad's friend killed it seven years later. Yeah. And it still had that bad eye. Yeah. It didn't hit the eye. I didn't know it was a coyote. I wouldn't have shot it. Yeah. I had orders to shoot that shit, but... Because they run the deer off. We it's thought- just a damn dog. There was stuff about animals we really didn't know back then yeah you know what i mean because we don't have the internet i didn't realize raccoons were as friendly as they were raccoons are awesome raccoons are very friendly and it depends on where you are i guess although and, they call them trash pandas for and i had reason. yeah and I had, <laughs> and I had no idea that you could tame fox and um coyote we thought that oh, yeah. was we thought those were undomesticated you know wild animals that could not be nah. domesticated same thing with like uh, servals and uh, mountain lions. You know, we thought those were vi- vicious, and there's no way to tame them. Hell no, they're fucking sweethearts. If yeah. you if you catch them, old, you well, know, if you raise them, if we raise baby, them, yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was a long time ago. That was early '80s. You know. Yeah, we got like, like internet like, helps, so you can see what other people are doing. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and I've seen fucking videos of guys that have slowly fed the damn. Squirrel, uh, 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 not squirrels, but raccoons to come in the house. Yeah. Wild raccoons, and he's petting them. They're laying on his lap and shit. Yeah. Because he's been feeding them. They come to our backyard and, like, hang out yeah. with the kitties. Yeah. The kitties think they're they neat. They love, cats love raccoons. 
I mean, whenever a possum comes, they always kind of look at him like, hmm, that looks like an ugly kitty. Yeah, they're very But ugly. the raccoons, they're kind of like, ooh, look at that. They're very, they're they're very intelligent, tail. very monkey-like, and they like cats. And and cats don't attack raccoons, they just love them. Our cats are it's, fascinated It's weird, by yeah. Every time they see one outside, they're like, ooh. They run right They, they the want to go out there and be like, hey, I want to hang out. Flirting like crazy with <laughs> raccoons. Well, it helps that Beijing has like a big fluffy kind of yeah. stripy tail, kind of they, like a raccoon. So she just probably feels like, yeah. hey, it's another one like me. Yeah, they, they love Beijing. <laughs> she just, he just kind of smells a little weird. That's all. Yeah. So, <laughs> so as I was saying, yeah, uh, <laughs> we, we do all these little side missions. We know you guys love it. So, so, so we start drinking, I start rolling, and I get sidetracked. <laughs> It's all fun and games. So it's September 7th, 1997. There's a father and son. They're out deer hunting, like I said, out of season. Yeah. In, uh, yeah. In, yeah. Uh, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, but the Pisgah National Forest, which yeah. is near Asheville, North Carolina. And they found a set of human bones not far from the Stony Creek picnic area. Hmm. This body had been buried in a shallow grave and appeared to have been later scattered by animals. That means murder. If it was buried in a shallow grave. Yeah. Day. Now, they're not really sure what the cause of death was because uh, of the body was obviously skeletal. It was so decomposed. They figured um, the the body was still dressed and there were like um, puncture marks and slashes like in the bra. And it also looked like there were some minor cut marks on the bones. So they presumed that the person had been stabbed to death. Yeah. So when they examined this skeleton, uh, they found that it belonged to a white woman between 40 and 55 years old with extensive dental work and a severely arthritic knee. Hmm. Now the coroner first um, kind of estimated that the woman had been dead for a year, but because it was North Carolina, you know, humidity, blah, 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 it yeah. might not have been that long. And like I said, it's skeletal, so it's hard to kind of tell. Now, it so happened that there was a doctor in uh, a different city in North Carolina, only about 50 miles from where the body had been found, and he had read about the body being found in the paper, and he's like, you know, I remember getting a flyer faxed to me at my hospital. I think he was an emergency room physician. Um, he's like, I got a flyer faxed to me a few months ago about this missing woman named Judy Smith who disappeared from Philadelphia. So he contacted the authorities, and uh, they contacted Jeffrey Smith, Judy's husband, and she sent them the uh, and he sent them the dental records. At which point, they matched the bones to Judy Smith. The dead hmm. woman was Judy Smith, found in fucking North Carolina, yeah, six hundred miles from where she had last been seen alive. Somebody picked her up, took her camp, and he killed her. Yeah, like I said, this is a or pretty, somebody pretty weird. killed her, put her in the trunk, and drove out to a remote area. The remotest thing that motherfucker could find was a damn campsite, and says this is a good place to bury her. Yeah, something fun. like There's that. There's like so much fucking weird about this. Yeah, case. it's so fucking weird. Actually, let's. Um, I think we've been going for probably almost an hour, so let's yeah. uh, take a break right now. When we come back to talk about more of this fucking weird case how this yeah. body ended up here that's like all kind of crazy fucking theories about this shit need me to refresh that screwdriver uh yes that all would right, be, that would be very that. good so we need to like refresh our drink sky vodka some of that sky vodka. i did it's I actually, vodka from the sky i yeah i actually like yeah. splurged and got well, well splurged it was only like three dollars yeah, more than cheap. it was only three dollars <laughs> more than the pinnacle yeah. and then actually i i decided to pay more because i'm like ooh, it came with like a little sample bottle of yeah. like citrus sky vodka and i'm like yeah. oh nice i can make like an extra drink out of that yeah. so yay <laughs> i'm just you know i'm tactical in my liquor store kind of shit yeah. all right so we're going to take a break right now when we come back we will talk some more about this mystifying disappearance and murder of judy smith See if she's still doing it. <laughs> Hello, baby cookie. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, you just always relax and lay on your back in the middle of the floor like a weirdo. Yeah. You're such a cutie pie. <laughs>before we went to the break some hunters in North Carolina had yeah. just found some bones in a shallow grave that ended up belonging to 50 year old Judy Smith who had disappeared from Philadelphia several months before looked like she'd been stabbed up yeah yeah and as I said the place where her body was found was 600 miles from where she had last been seen but that wasn't the only <laughs> weird thing now, they also found that the body, as I said, it had been scattered a little bit, but it still had, like, clothes on it. Weirdly, though, the clothes that the body was wearing were, like, more suited to, like, cold weather hiking clothes. Like, she had jeans, she had long johns, and hiking boots, which her family, they showed her family, like, pictures of those clothes and she's like yeah those aren't hers or she bought them somewhere else because they had never seen them before um you know and it, it clearly wasn't what she had last been seen in when she was in philadelphia she had just been wearing something like you know it was spring in philadelphia it was kind of like warm clothes and she was walking around sightseeing you know um there were also a bunch of other items found alongside the body that they didn't think belonged to her like there was a pair of like really expensive sunglasses there was a blue vinyl backpack that had like a bunch of winter clothing in it now this was significant because judy was well known for carrying a very distinctive bright red backpack and in fact if you look up there's pictures of her like on the internet and there's even pictures of her wearing it because they said i mean her kids were like every time she went on a trip she always wore that red backpack and they never did find that however they did find it and she did have it because some of the people that said that they saw her like even in philadelphia and stuff said yeah she had a bright red backpack on so they remembered it but they never did find the backpack in north carolina this was a blue one and it had winter clothes in it did those clothes fit her i don't know they never really said I don't like I don't know if she bought them at some point like after with I don't know it just seems like sounds to me like I think she got another boyfriend she got a new boyfriend who wanted to take her camping and hiking and bought and bought her new stuff and maybe that backpack was worn out by the time that happened yeah and then one thing led to another they got into a fight or he really he realized he didn't like her and they you know they got into a fight and he killed her so yeah, it it's like a possibility. Like but yeah, it's so... It's going to be something that if you saw it happen, it would make perfect sense. Well, all of them are like They're that. all like but that. But it's like... Yeah. It's just this one, it just seems so odd because yeah. she ended up so far away and it's like... It just seemed weird that she would like set out of her own volition without... You know, it's not that weird to like, oh, not tell your husband where you're going. But the thing is, if you were going to take off, why go to all the trouble... Of, oh, I forgot my driver's license. Oh, I have to buy a, a later flight. Because I assume she still had to pay for the first flight, even though she missed it. Right. And then she had to buy another one. Like, right. why even bother, like, going to Philadelphia and then taking off, like, the same day? That seems very weird. I can't answer that. I wasn't there. That's what I mean. So, it's, to me, that like, this whole case is fucking weird. I don't know, yeah. like, what anyone's reasoning is or nothing. 
So another thing that they were able to establish, they're like, well, clearly robbery was not the motive because even though like they never found her wallet her, or her ID or anything like that, but the backpack had $80 in cash in it. And there was a shirt that was buried like near the remains that had $87 in the front pocket, which again, seems weird because that's not usually a place that women put money in the front pocket of a shirt. It seems like this was something that was not well planned out. Yeah. It wasn't a robbery. And the murder probably wasn't planned. She had a bunch of money stashed on her in certain places, and whoever killed her didn't realize, even didn't even think to check. That's what I'm seeing. Maybe. That's just, I don't know. That's just really weird. But you would think, if she was traveling, traveling around with a new boyfriend, he probably would know that she had, that he had, that she had money on her. Yeah. Unless maybe he was just so spooked, he was just trying to get her buried and gone as quickly as possible. Yeah. Before somebody showed up. I mean, it's just, it's just weird. Like I said, this whole thing. That was her money, weird. though. Yeah. Now, like I said, I'll get into that in a minute, but it did kind of, like, uh, jibe with how much cash she had taken from How the do they room. know she was buried? I'd like to see this burial site. Well, now, what... Okay. Now, from what I've heard, and I don't know if this is correct or not, but from what I've read, like I said, I spent eight hours reading about this shit because I yeah. found it fascinating. From what I've read... This site where this is found, it's like a camp. It's a little bit remote, but it's not that far. It's about a quarter of a mile from like a, a fairly busy like tourist area, but it's real steep. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's kind of a steep trail. Now there had been where she was buried. It was like it was like the the hollow of a tree. So there was like a depression there already. Yeah. But then there was like dirt put over her. And then, like, some of her other clothing and stuff was also buried, like, separate. Maybe she was attacked by a guy. Stabbed her up so bad, she was lost a lot of blood, slightly para paralyzed. And uh, she got cold. She didn't die that she stayed alive. Uh, he left her there for dead. You know, maybe she regained consciousness, something like that. She could move a little bit, but not enough to save herself. So as she got cold in the night, she started to dig herself a little bit of shelter and then died. Maybe she wasn't actually buried. Maybe she did that, kind of with her shoulders and yeah, kind of there's no dug time. herself a little hole to try to stay warm. But because of loss of blood, maybe, you know, nerve damage or whatever, maybe she had tendons cut up from it. And I haven't seen the damage on her body, you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe she couldn't get up and save herself so she dug herself a little hole you know as it got cold in the night and then she died maybe it was something like that although i mean she had been dead since april probably like you know shortly yeah. after she disappeared from philadelphia i mean is it really that cold in north carolina in april maybe at night you know what i mean with you when i mean it wouldn't be freezing cold no not freezing cold but Maybe you know blood loss and hurt. Maybe you try True. to maybe you try to just dig yourself a little bit of shelter. Maybe it started raining slightly. So and you I, you know. know what, you know what's interesting is I was on the Web Sleuths forum and there's like 25 pages of like comments about this case. Um, and a couple people were like, you know, what if? Well, one, what if the body was misidentified? Maybe the maybe that's not even her. Um, you know, which kind of opens up a whole new can of room. Then actually opens up two more mysteries because it's like, you know, one, where is Judy Smith? Two, who the fuck is that? You know what I mean? So, yeah. I don't know. I'm not going there. And like I said, there were some dentists and stuff on the forum that said, you know, it's it's actually pretty easy to identify somebody even if you just have one tooth because yeah. teeth are very distinctive. Right. So they're like, like yeah, they're like operating under the assumption this is that this is probably her. Um, I did see a couple people that are like, maybe she wasn't murdered. Maybe she was killed by a bear, which... You know, that may be. I don't know. Like, I would think that they would be able to tell that, but maybe not. You'd have to see the damage on the bones. You, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, a blade's going to leave a certain kind of scratch. And a teeth, a teeth are going to leave something else. Right. Maybe it's misidentified. Maybe the, maybe the, the marks on those bones were post-mortem, things gnawing on it. And maybe, yeah, although, like I said, I'm pretty bad, sure that they would Maybe be it was a bad that. autopsy or something, but... Yeah, there, I mean, there's no way to know. I'm not like, going to like cast She was definitely reason. camping. She it does appear that... It. Yeah, it does appear that she went camping the on The robbery, w or excuse me, the motive was not robbery. She had money on her. And she had her, her wedding ring was on her, too. Right. 
And she was killed by something and left. Yeah, either a person or, or an, animal. an animal. It is an interesting case. But the way, well, there's more. Okay. Right. <laughs> it's like you're just going off like I'm done. Right. I'm not done. There was no sign of a camp being set in that not camp that i park. know of it seemed like like i said she had a backpack whether it was hers or not i don't know and it had and she had it looked like she had bought some clothes for yeah. hiking because she had hiking boots and she had and apparently she didn't have that before um some reports i saw said that she also had a flashlight and that she also had a paperback book but right. i don't know if that's like i have only a couple of sources See, I here, saw here's the that. deal you know what i mean i mean i'm ex-infantry if I was ever going to be homeless, I would never be a bum. You know what I mean? I'd get my gear together and I'd do what, what she's kind of doing. Yeah. I'd just camp for a living. You know, I'd be a mountain man because I could do that. Yeah. I could live, I could, I could run trot lines and fish and, you know, snare animals, even though I don't really like snaring. But when it comes between life and death, you can snare. Yeah. And, uh, you know, build my own log cabin. You know, I'd rather do that than be a bum. Well, yeah. You know what I mean? It's maybe more work, she would, for sure. But, maybe you know. she was doing something like that. Maybe she was just camping for a living in these camp grounds, and she and she ran afoul with something or someone. Maybe bear, maybe man. Yeah, but like I said, you know, maybe after... she decided that same thing. Maybe she wanted to live in honor. You know what I'm talking about? I'm gonna live at the campgrounds. It just you know? to me, it seems weird that I mean, a 50 year old woman. Um, as far as I know, she hadn't been having any problems. I think only one of her friends said, oh, the marriage was, quote unquote, tenuous. Yeah. They had been together a long time, but they hadn't been married that long. It hadn't mm. even been a year. Um, and according to everyone else, including their kids and all their other friends, it's like, no, they were totally happy, happily married. There was like nothing going on. Um, so I don't know what the reason would be for her to just take off. And it's like, like I said, it's not that weird to just like take off, like I need to get away from my husband or whatever. But it's like, you would think that she would at least tell her kids where she was going. She was a nurse. You would at least think that she would tell a client where she was going. I mean, or something. If she was taking off on purpose. I mean, that seems very strange. And Some especially, like I said, after she had gone through all that rigmarole of apparently actually going to Philadelphia, even though she'd missed the first flight, and showing up there, and yeah, I'm gonna go. Th like, why just disappear? That seems very weird. I've heard law enforcement people say that. I mean, are, people do weird that shit. There I are know. many cases of people, even very wealthy people, just having like a mental break and they just say fuck it and they leave. Yeah, and I they, guess. And they start a whole new life. I mean, people aren't logical all the time. Right. I mean, obviously, and some people just like do random They're shit. Running from stress that they didn't like, or a lifestyle that they didn't like or didn't choose. Yeah. Something that society told them they had to be that. So they tried to do that and they didn't like it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. But like I said, okay, so as I said, so they find the body. They find this, uh, you know, all the money. She had her wedding ring. They never did find her red backpack. As far as I know, they never did find the clothes that she had last been seen in. Um, but she had all these uh, different clothes on. Now, after they found the body and after they publicized who it was... Um, a bunch of people in the Asheville, North Carolina area came forward and said that they had seen her, like back in April, which was a few days after she had vanished from Philadelphia. Now, one of these people, she was like a retail clerk, and she worked, and I think it was like a one of those Christmas store type things, you know, like where you year round where you can buy ornaments and shit. Yeah. And she said, yeah, that woman came in here. Um, she seemed very uh, friendly. She seemed didn't seem under any duress or anything like that. Um, and she actually said that this woman said, I'm from Boston. My husband is a lawyer and he's attending a conference in Philadelphia. Hmm. Now, whether the woman actually did remember that or if she just read about Judy Smith and like just put that in, there. put that in there. I don't know. But she's saying that that's what the woman said because she was talking to her while she was in the store. Um, and she said that this woman also said, yeah, I just decided to come down here to Asheville. Yeah. Just, she didn't really give a reason. She just said she decided to come down here. Yeah. So there were a couple of other sightings of her as well uh, in the Asheville area. So there was a guy that ran a deli in Asheville, and he said, yeah, a woman that looked like Judy Smith came in here and spent $30. She bought a toy truck and a whole bunch of sandwiches, <laughs> which, weird. Yeah. 
Um, also, there was a woman who worked at uh, the Biltmore Estate, which, if you're not from here, is like a really, really popular uh, tourist attraction. It's like a big, huge mansion, and there's like campgrounds all around it and restaurants and all kind of shit like that. Now, she said that a woman resembling Judy Smith had driven up to one of the Biltmore Estate campgrounds in a gray sedan and asked if she could park the car there and sleep in it. Hmm. Right? So the woman's like, no, you can't really you know, park it here, sleep in it. She also said that the car was full of like boxes and bags. Like, I don't know if like yeah. hoarding or if she just bought a bunch of shit. Or Supplies. I don't know. Yeah. So she was like, okay, well you can't like sleep in your car here. And she was like, okay, no prob. And then she just drove off. So she identified the car. It was a gray sedan. That's all they know. Okay. But it's like, where did this car come from? Mm -hmm. Because here's one thing that even though, um, she had that Judy knew, uh, they knew that Judy had some cash with her. She had a credit card. I think it was like an American Express gold card or something like that, at least that her husband knew about. And that wasn't used, um, from the day she disappeared. Weird. So either she had a credit card that nobody knew about, like under a different name, or she had more cash stash that, that nobody saving. knew about or something. Because she did have, like I said, she had a credit card and her husband knew about it and stuff, but they flagged it and it didn't And they're get pretty used. sure that that's her. As far as they know. Huh. I mean, like I said, these okay. are, this shit happened. Okay, All so. Right. Um, nobody, as far as I know, as far as I could determine, nobody that saw her in Asheville, North Carolina, saw her with anyone else. Because, like I said, it does seem like maybe she met someone, like maybe she had a pen pal, or maybe she met a boyfriend, or a boyfriend lived down there, or something like that, and she was going to, like, hang out with him. But nobody reported ever seeing her with anybody. She was always alone. So... Again, a little weird. Now, another thing that was kind of weird is like, as far as anybody that knew her could remember, she had never particularly expressed a desire to go to North Carolina before um, or go hiking there. She was kind of an outdoorsy kind of woman. She did like some kind of minor hiking and shit like that, like, you know, around where she was in Massachusetts and shit where she was from. But she had never, like, specifically said, oh, I want to go to the Biltmore Estate or I want to go to North Carolina. In fact, all they know that she went to the state of North Carolina at one point before because her husband, Jeffrey, who I said, uh, he's actually, like, morbidly obese. Uh, he's passed away now. But um, he was at a weight loss clinic there in Raleigh-Durham for a week and she like went down there to visit him. But Raleigh Durham is like 250 miles from where her body was found. So it's not like she was just like, oh, I'm down here for a week, like visiting my husband at the weight loss clinic and I met some dude right here and now I'm coming down. It's Cause it, you know what I mean? It was like far away. And as far as I know, that was a couple years prior. And that was the only time that she had ever been there as far as I could determine. Hmm. So, so they're asking Jeffrey Smith, and like I said, the husband has been pretty much, I mean, obviously, you know, they couldn't arrest him on anything because they didn't have enough, like, uh, you know, evidence, but they're keeping him as a person of interest this whole time, and I think a lot of cops kind of thought that maybe he was involved. Um, Boy, it doesn't sound like it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think it's very, very unlikely, and like I said, he passed away, I believe, in 2005, I think, from uh, weight-related issues, because like I said, he was he was very, very overweight. Um, Maybe that contributed to, you know, yeah. some kind of marital unhappiness. And she well, split. she was kind of overweight, too, and was you know she? what, uh, okay, and I, I don't mean to, like, I, I don't mean to be mean, yeah. but it does seem like when they put, like, the missing persons reports out about her... Um, the description of her said that she was five foot one and that she was 135 pounds. Now I'm looking at the picture of her going, going no way. that is not 135 pounds, right. five foot one. I, look, I'm five foot three. I weigh more than that. And she looks way bigger than me. Right. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just saying, I, I don't know if she just carries her weight differently because some people do. Um, but I, it, to me, it looks more like 160, 170 pounds. Telling you, Jenny, man, so far this sounds like the story of a woman who uh, maybe had some kind of a mental, you know what I mean? I don't want to say mental issue, but maybe some people just, they just they just can't take it anymore. Maybe she just glitched out. She kind of glitched out. She says, fuck it, I'm going to get away from shit for a while. 
and she had her, she had her own money, and she bought a cheap car and fucking went camp and then you know had fun for a while, tried to leave the past in the past, and by chance I think crossed past with something that killed her. I'm not convinced it's a man yet. It may have been an animal. That's what I mean. Yeah, I'm yeah. not entirely sure, but yeah. I'd have to see so, those. I'd have to see that damn. I'd have to see those bones. Yeah. And see, you know, they said there's cut marks on those bones. Yeah. You should, you know, I want, I want to see photos. And like I said, it looked like there were stab marks through like the bra and it stuff. Looked like, like it that? looked like slashes and like punctures from something metal. Like a blade. We're not talking about as teeth. far as I, like I said, it, as far as I know, like everything that they could determine was the coroner ruled that it was. He's like, I'm not going to say like for certain, but he's yeah. like, it looks like she was stabbed. I mean, death. it's very rare, but there have been people who have been biking, killed by mountain lions. Yeah, and you know, an American mountain lion is not known as being particularly deadly or aggressive, but. There are individuals out there that'll run down somebody on a bicycle and kill them. Yeah. Now I'd have to kind of compare. You know what what does the, what does the clothing look like after an attack like that? You know what I mean? Maybe this was a man. You know, but I I, I haven't seen the photographs. You know, what yeah. I mean? uh, of the of the evidence. It's weird. So yeah. But it's still plausible. She was trying to get away from it. She was basically taking a break. Yeah. You know what I mean? So she had mental issues, and, and a guy killed her, or a. You know, a guy she didn't know killed her, or an animal killed her, something like that. Now, one of the reasons why the authorities kind of clung to the idea that her husband had something to do with it. Now, he said that, as far as he knew, that Judy had taken $200 in cash with her on the day that she went sightseeing in Philadelphia, and that she also had her American Express gold card. There was also $500 in cash that was left back at the hotel room. So. She left 500 of her own dollars? Well, that was like, I guess that was their, like, walking around money or whatever. But it was, apparently there was still $500 left in the room. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Now, like I said, there were also, okay. Now, Jeffrey Smith, he was a lawyer, like I said. He refused to take a polygraph test. Now, he said he told the police that he would take a polygraph test if the FBI administered it. Okay. However, because the FBI would not get involved on the case uh, for whatever reason, because it didn't didn't meet their criteria or whatever. That almost makes sense. He didn't want to be set up. That's what I'm saying. So uh, they acted like that made him like super suspicious. But I'm like, one, look, he's a lawyer. Yeah. Um, he knows his shit. Like he right. knows his rights and everything like that. So I can't really say I blame him. And honestly, lie detector tests. It's like you know not they real, make a not. big deal out of it. It's like they don't it, they don't let you like put them into evidence at a trial for a reason because they can be manipulated yeah there's training programs to teach you how to beat them exactly so they're not super and then the thing is it's like so he's so the cops are kind of saying oh well he refused a polygraph test he's like no i said i would take one if the fbi administered it the fbi said well we're not really going to get involved because this case isn't like doesn't meet our criteria so he's like yeah no thank you and then when they asked him to do one later he's like okay well i would but by that point, he was on this, like, weird heart medication, and he was yeah. afraid that it would give, like, a false positive, that's so he didn't want to do it then. Like I said, and that's... Yeah, that's probably the right thing to that's do. That's pretty reasonable. I mean, like I said, they make a big deal about polygraph tests. All they use them for, I mean, at least in my experience, is um, eliminating a suspect. I mean, that's pretty much all they use them for. But they made a big deal about, oh, he didn't want to take one. You know what I mean? Now, there was another thing, too, that the police thought was a little strange. Now, they said when they searched, like, and this is going back to April, like, you know, a day or two after um, Judy had disappeared. So they searched the hotel room. Now, Judy's luggage was there because, as I said, presumably it had gone on the plane with her husband, like, even though she had had to take a later flight. Now, they said that her luggage was there and it had clothes in it, but the clothes hadn't been worn. Now, 
Jeffrey had said, remember, that when he woke up on the day, like, after she got there that night and said she was in the shower. So they're like, well, did she just put the same clothes back on that she had flown in? Because that seems a little weird. And he's like, yeah, that's what she did. She put the same clothes back on. Because none of the clothes that she brought in her luggage were worn. So they thought that was a little weird that she had just, like... Also, they thought it was weird that there were no, like, female... There were no cosmetics or, like, you know, female-type toiletry items in the room. But when they asked her kids about it, they said, you know, she wasn't, like, super, super girly. They're like, she did have, like, some lotion and some basic cosmetics and stuff. But they're like, they she usually kept them in her red backpack, which she would have had with her. So maybe she had a change of clothes... In the backpack as well. I don't really know. But I'm just saying that the cops thought that was weird that none of her clothing had been worn. And that kind of like some investigators were like, well, maybe she didn't even come to Philadelphia. And the husband had killed her beforehand and then set this whole thing up to make it look like, oh, I forgot my driver's license. And then, you know, just to get an alibi. But that seems a little convoluted to me. Well, they they identified that body out there in that damn ca- campground, didn't they? Yeah. As long as that happened, then think about this. They found her out in the campground with a new pack and a bunch new of clothes clo- and a bunch of clothes that were suited for camping and hiking. Yeah. That means she wasn't out there against her will. Nope. All right. Yeah, she went on her own. Yeah, she went on her own. The car wasn't there, was it? Not that I know of, no. Maybe I don't know was, if they ever found the car. Maybe she was killed for that car. Yeah, like, b- because the car was never found, like, some people were presuming that yeah. her killer had driven her to the... Like, she was with that person, and then, like, after he killed her, he took off in it. Maybe she went camping and ran into some people, and they killed her and took her car. Yeah, it could be. And then they had two cars after that. Yeah. You know? Something like I that. I mean, the thing is, like I said... Yeah, it's just barely possible that, like, her husband might have hired somebody to do it. But they said, okay, well, there's no way. One, there's no way he could have done it because, firstly, he was at the conference for those three days. It's like everybody saw him. He even moderated, like, one of the panels. You know, so he was there. Yeah. Um, Secondly, like I said, he was morbidly obese. The place where her body was found, it was about a quarter mile of really, really steep trail they're like there is no way that he could have carried a body up that way or even walked up that way without a body because he was just in really 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 bad shape and it's like you know what i mean if he wanted to kill his wife it seemed like there would have been like nah. way simpler ways to do it so i would say you can eliminate him yeah i really don't think that yeah. he had anything to do with it at all and like i said you know, not only all of that, but he also spent, like, thousands and thousands of dollars of his own money, like, looking for her after she disappeared. He seemed genuinely concerned about where she had gone. You know, he hired private investigators. He just, you know what I mean? I just don't think there was any the reason for him to do that. The heart of this whole case is that she was up there far <coughs> from home camping with camping equipment. The car wasn't there. That's really what this case is all about. Mm-hmm. She wasn't there against her will. However, she got she got there somehow. Yeah. It's believed that she had her own car. Well, where's that damn car? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. And, okay. like, if she rented it... Where's that? Where Like, where's, where's the record where's of that? Record? Yeah, I don't because think she rented a car. I think she bought a used car. Maybe she did. For, for, for our foreign fans... I mean, you, you know, can't rent a car without a credit card, even in 1997. Can't rent a car. Yeah, and another thing is, is that it's very rare to be killed for a car in the United States because... In the American culture and in an American economy, a car really isn't worth killing somebody. The poorest of people in the United States have a fucking car. In Sao Paulo, Brazil, yeah, they'll kill you fucking for a car during a carjacking. Even a even a, a stupid car. Not so much in the United States. They're just not worth enough to kill somebody. Well, you can over. buy a cheap one off you Craigslist. You can buy a you cheap really car off of nothing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah off, off, you can cheap, buy a cheap car for nothing, and the parts aren't really worth a whole lot. And then if you steal something that's expensive, like a Ferrari, you can't go anywhere with it. I mean, it just sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah. And uh, I've heard that there are high-end car thieves that steal Bugattis and Ferraris 
but those are very organized car thieves. They have whole ways of getting that car out of country. And they usually end up somewhere in like Saudi Arabia. And that's where they're sending them. They'll send them to some Saudi prince for, for a fucking, for a song. You know what I mean? Uh, but you can't sell a Ferrari here on the black market. There's just, it calls too much attention. The cops wouldn't know. Well, yeah, you have to get it, it might as well have a big neon sign yeah. saying stolen on yeah. top of it. <laughs> you, if you steal something expensive, you have to get it out of the country. And that's definitely not happening here. She wasn't killed for that car. Uh, not under normal means. I think maybe they killed her and used the car as a means to get out of well, there. Well, yeah, they just took it. They just took it to get out of there. But they didn't want that car. That wasn't the motive. Yeah, yeah. it's just, like I said, okay. So... Um, yeah, so as I was saying, um, her kids also said that she, uh, that they had seen their mother alive, uh, the night before they left for Philadelphia, and her ticket on the later flight to Philadelphia, the 730 flight, uh, had been used, um, so there was the correct amount of passengers on the plane, and I think there was at least one or two other witnesses on the plane who said they had seen a woman that resembled Judy Smith on that flight, so... You know, like I said, I was reading through, like, this 28 pages of fucking theories about people, and people were like, I don't even think she even went to Philadelphia. I think her husband had her killed, like, before they even went, and he just set up this whole thing. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, but... That's very impractical. Is it? Yeah, and I said, that just seems super too much trouble. Like yeah. I said, if you want your wife dead, there's way easier ways to do ways it to and do get locally. away with it. Yeah, there are ways to do that locally. It yeah. just seems like way too much trouble like to go through, like, oh, she's going to set up this. So it's, oh, why'd she forget her driver's license? She traveled all the time. You'd think that she would know. It's like, shit, man, I've forgotten my driver's license a couple times, too. Like, don't, I'm going like, to put gonna put this woman in the category of runaway bride. Yeah. For one reason or another. She ran from her husband. Mental issues, something like that. Maybe she had a secret boyfriend. Maybe he act, Maybe they went camping together and he killed her. Might have been something like that. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling like... Um, I mean, it was 1997. Uh, you know, internet dating wasn't really a big thing. And her family said that um, she wasn't super computer savvy. I don't think she had a computer or anything like that. But it's possible that she could have met someone. I think it's not going to happen. Like through, like she was like a pen pal, or she just knew In somebody hotels. that had moved away, or yeah, or something like Maybe that. She left her, her, she left her husband. She stayed in hotels for a while. While she was in the hotel, she met an interesting guy. You know yeah. I mean? And then he was kind of in a similar situation where he was just kind of like a nomad traveling around. He's like, let's be campers. Let's go camping for a couple years. And then they go do their camping for a couple of years. Maybe there were some other people with them, you know. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't one. Maybe it was. A, maybe it was two guys. One of them she was, you know. And one of them she was having a relationship with, and the other one maybe not so much. You know what I mean? So they all go camping, and for some reason, another fight breaks out or a disagreement, and they he kills her. And then both those dudes drive the car out of there. Drives the cars out of there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they ditch her car. Maybe fucking pull. It, push it off of a cliff there are places in the united states where you can ditch a car and it'll never be found yeah yeah i mean like i said it from all um evidence it yeah. does appear that she went to that place by her own volition. voluntarily yeah. they're like it didn't look like the body had been no. dragged there it didn't look like i mean she looked like she was dressed for was hiking dressed, yeah she was dressed for a long trip there and to stay there so she she willingly went there yeah, it's like the and question is like, why did she meet somebody, or just probably, she, did uh, she just decide like for gonna, some I'm, reason like, hey, I want to go camping. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say knowing the nature of a woman, and you 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 should say this. You, you would probably believe this too. She probably didn't go on her own. There was somebody else that said, let's go do this. I think there's a lot more. Likely. Yeah, because it really seems. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible, obviously, but. It really does seem strange to just go through all this rigmarole yeah. and you're going on this big trip with your yeah. husband and you have all these plans and stuff. And then all of a sudden, oh, I'm going to blow up my whole entire life and vanish and not even tell my fucking kids where I'm going. And just so I can go all the way down to fucking North Carolina, 600 miles away, and go hiking at this fucking place that I've never even been to before. It just seems like a well, really strange thing I could see that, that, could thing see to that happening. What if there was a medical condition involved? What if she had a fucking brain tumor? 
The, see, that's kind of like, because I'm kind of of yeah. the mind. It's like, yeah, there were like all those sightings of her that yeah. day in Philadelphia. And yeah. some of them were probably not her. Some of them were probably the homeless woman. But what about the the woman that they said stayed at that hotel? It's yeah. like a homeless woman wouldn't have money to stay at a hotel. So maybe she had like a psychotic break, man. Like maybe she had a stroke or something. Had a stroke, had a brain tumor, and then all of a sudden she runs from her husband, meets another guy. She's very pliant because she has this. Because she has like a, yeah. And then they go camping, and then she starts acting crazy because of her brain tumor. A fight breaks out. Dude kills her, leaves her there, and they take her car and his car, and they split or something like that. Now, Might have been so. I should I'm be just, noted. Just, like, you know, yeah, yeah, like I said, I get to, like every every scenario that I can think of is weird. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's just it's every single scenario is weird. Now here's another complicating factor. There was a serial killer named Gary Michael Hilton. Now in 2007, which was a decade after this incident, he murdered. Uh, an elderly couple in the same national forest in North Carolina. Hmm. And he also was later convicted of killing and beheading two other hikers in one in Georgia and one in Florida. They were younger women. Like, so he would kind of like go in these national forests. That was kind of his thing. And and he would attack people at random Hmm. and behead them sometimes and sometimes tie them to trees and stab them to death Hmm. so even though the judy smith murder happened like 10 years before his first known crimes because he did get convicted of that shit later on um the modus operandi is similar enough that you know they're kind of wondering maybe this was like an maybe he'd been doing it for a really long time and we just never caught him maybe this was like an early Maybe she just went out, like, camping by herself, and then this motherfucker happened upon her. Yeah, maybe. And, you know, because that seems, I, you know, it's like... Where's her car, though? Maybe he took it. Where's his? Maybe I, he didn't have one. Yeah. Maybe he just, like, wandered around and, like, looking for people. Because, like I said, the one that he did in 2007, which was in the exact same national forest as where she was found... Um, you know, they were, they were older. I mean, they were 70 something, 80s or something, yeah. something like that. They were like camping out in the, or like in, in a Winnebago or something. And he just like approached them, you know, anything's, randomly. Anything's possible, but I, I, I'm going to say it's going to lean more towards whoever killed her was the person that took her out there. That's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say it's, yeah, it's, I kinda feel more like, likely. Yeah. Like I said, from all the evidence presented, it doesn't seem like anybody kidnapped her no. from Philadelphia. Yeah. Because, one, well, and uh, another thing, too, that her family said, like like I said, she was seen in Philadelphia and she was, like, doing normal touristy shit. But then, like, some people saw her and she was, like, doing, like, crazy shit. But her family all said... One thing about her was that she was very um, loud and she would like tell like whatever she wanted, she would fucking tell you. They're like, if somebody tried to like snatch her off the street, she would make a huge fucking scene. What if instead of it's a serial killer, it was a one off type of deal? Dude took her out there and she attacked him and he killed her in self defense. (laughs) Maybe Mm. she had that damn brain problem. Yeah, that yeah, I guess that's a possibility. She started freaking out and did something, and he fucking popped her, and then they started fighting, and then it started to escalate, and then it's like, "Fuck you, bitch! I'm through with you!" And it's, wow, stab her. Yeah. And he's like, "Oh shit!" You know, Some people have speculated that crazy bitch, and then he, you know, he leaves her out there and fucking splits. Some people yeah. have kind of made a big deal too about, and I'm not sure how far away it was, but it's funny because a couple of articles I read said that. Oh, not that far away from where the body was found was a quote unquote lesbian house. So I guess it was just but a house. Yeah, well, it was a know, house where a lesbian couple lived. Lesbian is going to come out and kill it's them. The, the lesbian, yeah, house. lesbian house. So some they're going to mark that shit on the map too. It's right marked right on the map. Lesbian right, house. Lesbian, lesbian house. house. So I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> it's a house. It's a house with two women living. <laughs> so some have speculated that maybe she wasn't running away to meet a man, maybe she was running away to meet another woman. Like, maybe she was a secret lesbian. Maybe that's, you maybe know. that's why she had that break. 
living a life that you know living living a that's false what i mean life. i don't know it's like you know it's out there Her but you know weird lie. shit's happened yeah, right, yeah so i'm not saying that it was necessarily a woman that killed her but maybe right. she went out there you know with the purpose of like meeting this woman that she knew or something like that and then somebody else killed her or you know it could have been something main like elements that. of the case is that she's found out there she went out there on her own by her own volition she was, that's they do she think was prepared, that she prepared she was prepared to go and out everybody there. that saw her in Asheville said yeah. she was acting normal and the car is gone yeah that's that's you know that's weird where that's the fuck weird. is that car Where's the car yeah. And like I said, some people too, like some people went off on some crazy tangents and stuff, but some people have said, well, maybe, maybe the body wasn't her. But I said, but that just, like I said, that just brings up two more mysteries. You're right, yeah. Because like, well, who the fuck is it? And yeah. where the fuck is she? You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, yeah, it's, it's easy for somebody to get murdered and they'd never find them because it happens all the time, but... Maybe she's still... If that wasn't her, like, maybe she's still alive somewhere. Yeah. But this shit was on, like, fucking Unsolved Mysteries. I don't know when. But they have, like, um... Her husband passed away uh, in 2005, I think. Okay. Um, but he put up a bunch of money and, like, the cops put up a bunch of money. I think there's, like, a $17,000 reward or something like that. But there's, like, I... Like I said, I spent fucking ages and ages, like, reading about this case. It's, like, fascinating because... I don't know. It just seems so strange to me that somebody, this whole sequence of events just seems so improbable. Well, it was over 20 years ago. The guy who did it is probably dead. And some people have said too, because, okay, check out the whole, like, the whole uh, shit at the beginning where, you know, they're going to the airport and she's like, oh, I forgot my driver's license. I have to go back home and take a later flight. Some people are saying maybe she did that on purpose because she was going back home to get some secret shit that her husband didn't know about. So she never planned to go. I mean, she did go to Philadelphia, apparently, because a lot of people saw her there. But maybe she had to go back and get some shit that she didn't want him to know about. Like, stuff that... So maybe she was planning this the whole time. And that was like a ruse. So she could go back and get, like, extra cash or a different credit card or something. Or, like, different clothes. I don't know. yet. Yeah. I think it's best not to read into it too much. Yeah, but it does seem like kind of weird that that happened. You know what I mean? Because if you were planning on... If you were planning on running away, it seems like why... Why waste all that time and money, like, planning this trip, paying for a flight that you miss, and then having to buy another flight to go later, and then actually going there... And saying you're going to do this, that, and the other, and then oh well, no, really, I'm out. It's well, think, like what? I, that's very weird. I think most of the testimony, witness testimony, agrees that she wasn't in her right mind. If that was even there her, must have been. If that it was even her, but but the, all the people she did in run Asheville, from her husband without any warning. All the people in Asheville, North Carolina, that supposedly saw her said she was acting normal. Nobody mm-hmm. in Asheville said she was acting weird. I mean, other than saying, "Hey, can I sleep in my car?" That's a little bit weird, but uh-huh. I mean. Not that weird. Not like masturbating in front of a window weird. Yeah, and then we're not sure that's her. We're not sure that's her. Like yeah. I said, I mean, yeah, there was that homeless woman that looked like her, but like I said, a homeless woman wouldn't necessarily have the money to stay in a hotel for two days. I don't know, Jenny, you got me on this one. I mean, you know, it's kind of... I told you, it's fucking weird, right? Yeah, there's not a lot of, not, not a lot of detail to this case. And uh, I don't know, man. That's why I was like fascinated. As much as I've been drinking, I can't figure this one out. That's why I was like fascinated because I'm like, I'm reading all these people's yeah. different theories and stuff. I'm like, this is the craziest shit ever. It's like, why? What happened? Like, uh, what? Why would you just like suddenly decide? I uh, mean, to me, it's like weirder. Like, if she had just been out like in Philadelphia and oh, I'm sightseeing and some jackass like fucking hit her over the head and like kidnapped yeah. her and like for whatever reason like took her to fucking North Carolina to kill her. Like, let's go 600 miles on a road trip. Like, whatever. But the fact that she went to Philadelphia and, like, planned the trip and everything like that and then decided, I'm going to leave. And go camping. And go camping in North Carolina without telling anyone, even her children, who, I mean, they were grown, but they were still her kids. It's like, without telling anyone where she was going, and then she ends up murdered. That's like what the fuck ha- what the fuck happened? It's like it's just like I would love to know the fucking sequence of events there. Um, because this is just mystifying yeah. to me. Mystifying. 
There was a man involved. Oh. And she's like walking around in stores like, oh yeah, I'm from Boston and my husband's a lawyer. She's like, she wasn't hiding it. And another thing too, like I said, they flagged like her credit cards and none of them were used. So either so she, she had, had cash. yeah, she either had a bunch of secret cash. Or I mean, he, else he knew that she had two hundred dollars, like when she went out sightseeing. Maybe somebody else was paying her way. Either someone else was paying, or she had some like secret shit. Like yeah. she had like a bunch of cash that he didn't know about, or she had like some credit cards she didn't know about. Now she had been married two times before, so maybe she had credit cards like in her old married names, yeah, or something like that that he didn't maybe. know about. I mean, they'd been together a long time, but it's not that hard to like keep a. If she had like a PO box, why would she like have... the bills would come there. But it seems like why, like why go to all that trouble? And why would she have like the mental wherewithal to say I'm not going to use my normal credit card and I'm going to use my other credit card? That's what I mean. It's like it's just crazy. And sounds it's like... more. It sounds like it's more likely that whoever she was with was using their credit card. That's what I mean. Maybe somebody just bought her a bunch of shit. Yeah. Like somebody bought her. Like, a, where'd her red backpack go? Did they throw a, it out? Might have been a secret boyfriend. And I think it was worn out, so she got a new one. Yeah, because her kid said that, well, she'd had that a long she time. She got a new one and then and uh, a new stock of clothes to go camp and, and go hike. And, you know, this could have been, it was, she either had a secret man or a secret woman. She might have had a damn girlfriend. Yeah. Like I said, that's, I think the only reason people say that, though, is just because of the quote-unquote lesbian house. That was, I'm like, yeah. what? Come on now. It's like a fucking lesbian house. She might have had, <laughs> you know, I'm, gonna, I'm you know, I'm not, I'm not Crazy. Gonna, you know, I don't have any proof of it, but maybe we're assuming it's a man. Yeah, it didn't necessarily have to be. Yeah, maybe she had a girlfriend. Yeah. And she kept a secret from everybody. Yeah. And uh, maybe they had too much to drink, got into a fight, and fucking girlfriend stabbed her. Yeah, it does happen. I yeah. mean, it's... Something like that. I mean, statistically, it's much more likely that it was a man, but I mean... But because Not you're looking for a man, you, maybe, maybe yeah. you're looking for a man, but you're blinding yourself. It might have been she might have had a secret girlfriend. Yeah, I mean, like I said, that is something that some people have thrown around. Maybe so. she planned on coming back. Yeah, you know what I mean with with a cockamamie story of I, you know, I, I had, you know, I, I got had, kidnapped, you know, or I had to do this and that. There's been some weird fucking cases. True. You know, these kind of cases always mystify me, like these people, because I've written about a couple cases where like. You know, like a woman would like leave her house and it seemed like super normal. And then like three days later, they'd find her car like abandoned in the yeah. airport parking lot or something yeah. like that. And then they never fucking never find, find her. her. And it's like, what the, like, how do you even do that? I don't, uh, it's I've just, heard many cops. It's so weird to me. It's just so weird. I've heard so many weird. cops on a lot of good programs say that, no, there are people that disappear. They disappear yeah, on they purpose. Yeah, they do. On purpose. So rich people will walk away from an empire. You never see them again. It just Never seems found. like it seems like it would take so much planning. Yeah. I mean because you would need to have I mean like I said in this case she would have had to have other cash stowed away like she she had been planning it for a long time maybe. She would have had to have other credit cards that he didn't know about or something because they didn't I mean the cops didn't know like any other credit cards to flag. They just knew that you know that gold card that she had. And that wasn't used by anyone. Mm. So it, it's just mystifying. And like uh, I said, it's not like she, you know, the people that saw her in Asheville, nobody saw her with anybody. Nobody said that she was acting weird or acting like she was like under duress or threatened by anybody. She was just shopping like a normal person. It's a mystery. That's what I mean. That's, I why, it's in, that's why it's in your new book. I told you this that's, shit is that, fucking weird. It's weird. Why, that's why it's in your third book. If you know, if you guys want more mysteries like this and fucking <laughs> buy yeah, it. this is this is gonna be in my new book. I'm, I'm fucking plugging the shit out of the book. That's that's but how I, I got interested in this it. This is book number three, and it's just more mysteries. This this weirds me out uh, as yeah. much as that Roland T. Owen shit. Yeah, the horror in room ten. What yeah. was it, 1035 or whatever the hell? Time. Grim it was a long show. Was. Many shows in the past. Yeah, it was a, it was I'm an too, old one. I, I've been drinking too heavily to uh, try to remember these old shows about Roland. I can kind of remember who it was. Yeah, it happened like in the 30s. Or like yeah, 30 he got choked time. out, I think, didn't he? Well, he didn't was know? like tortured. He was tortured, yeah. And stabbed a bunch of times. I think there times. was some gay action going on with that one. Maybe, but it's like, it's just, the whole yeah. thing that was weird to me, not so much that he got murdered, but... That nobody saw anybody going in or out. Yeah. And, like, just the whole way, like, he was behaving, like, in the days before that. Like, he was yeah. behaving, like, super, like, he would sit in the room, like, with the 
curtains closed and like he would just sit there and like watch the maid do stuff yeah. and it's like it was like super creepy you got and nail- like the, the phone kept getting yeah. knocked off the hook and shit like that it's just like a weird fucking case you, you got anything else to add on this case no that's pretty much it okay, man it's like it up, man. It's seven, so seventeen thousand dollar reward if anybody knows yeah. what happened to this fucking woman i would love to hear it because i am just befuddled by this entire well, case and i have that, spent the last couple days reading everything about this case it could be that it me. could be that we're missing certain certain uh pieces to this puzzle maybe the fucking law enforcement says yeah there's some other details that we haven't released to the public way right? yeah maybe well maybe that seems like it's probably maybe there's the some shit we don't know about yet so because it doesn't seem to be enough there to solve this yeah and i mean i wish someone would because it, it's yeah. so frustrating to me and, you know, I write about unsolved murders all the time, so it's kind of, like, constantly yeah. frustrating. But it's like, this is one that I really want to see solved, because I want to know what the fuck happened. Like, what the fuck happened this last couple of days, some- like, before she lived with, like, what the fuck was going on? It was what- something kind of mundane. It just, it, just that what's left behind is hard to decipher. You know what I'm talking about? But that's why this shit is yeah. fascinating to people, because it's like, you weren't there. You didn't see what happened. Right. And what is left happened like what is left over the evidence looks like super yeah. weird and you can't think of anything like because i would never well and i don't have the money either but it's like i would never just like hey let's go on a trip and then like the next day i'm like boop i'm out i'm just gonna go 600 fucking miles Tells and not that, to, like there's something up with the heart you know what i'm talking about people were involved other yeah. influences were involved you know what i mean Maybe a it man was saying, no, we're be. not going to do it. We're not, don't do that. Come on, come with me. Something like that. Or mental problems. Yeah, it's like if some of those sightings yeah. in Philadelphia yeah. were of her, maybe like maybe she had a, like, what, a mini stroke or something stroke like that. And she had some kind of, like she wasn't tumor. in her right mind or right. something. That would actually be, I know it's terrible, but it would actually make me feel better because it would like give me a reason like of why why, she's, do that. why she suddenly yeah. started acting. Yeah. in such a weird way and like just like i said just blow up your whole life and not tell anybody where you were going that just seems very weird to me yeah but yeah all right so you you're getting all drunk and stuff no I, i'm getting drunk i've been drunk <laughs> i'm just getting antsy you know he's getting I'm, antsy i'm getting antsy he's telling me to walk around okay so we have to shut like this shit out. shut it the fuck down Okay, you don't have Shut to get like the fuck down. You don't have to get hostile. I love this shit, man. <laughs> we got other shows we got to do. We can do that shit tomorrow. Yeah, we have to probably just. Yeah, uh, yeah we probably. I was gonna record another one tonight, but I don't yeah. think I don't think you're in any no, uh, shape to, right <laughs> to no. do anything. It's no, still I'm fairly good. early, so you can. And still you know what? We didn't. We, ha- we we haven't done a paranormal one in a while. We gotta do a paranormal or some kind somebody, of somebody like show. somebody wanted us to do uh, superstition mountains, like all yeah. the legends and stuff around superstition mountains. So we might do yeah. that next week or the week after. Man, I've been finding finding out more and more about that damn Tic Tac UFO. Yeah. Yeah, that's well, a good Well, what have you sign. found out about it? That that shit was real. <laughs> that shit was real. Uh, just listen to the uh, to the. Uh, to, to the guys that saw it, you know, the pilots and the people that were, were on those aircraft carriers, the guys that were running the radar, and guys that saw a more clear image of the damn craft than what was available to the public. It was shaped like a Tic Tac, and it had two little things coming out, like little L's coming off the bottom of it. He said he saw them clearly, almost kind of like it was little antennas coming or out like of the bottom. Or like little feet. He, he said it was almost like little exhaust pipes coming out of the bottom of it. But it wasn't emitting any, any kind of uh, infrared energy so there wasn't any heat coming from hmm. it. so you're not talking about something that's you know jet pr- propulsion or rocket propulsion it was an unknown propulsion and the motherfucker was outperforming those fucking hornets those hmm. f-18s this thing was fucking doing Extra terrestrial ap- yeah yeah, yeah. Nice, man unless there's some kind of an exotic propulsion out there that they don't that they don't let us know about why don't they share that shit with the rest of the class they thought the guys that were fucking seeing it on radar, and then when they went out there and investigated it, they were thinking, "Man, this has got to be some kind of pro- some kind of drones." They were, and, and the the pattern of movements they were using was real kind of random and, and like inefficient. They were seeing little white things down by the ocean jumping around, you know. They would drop out, and they saw it over a period of several you know days because they were doing a field problem out there in the ocean, the Air Force or the uh, the Navy was. So they weren't out, it wasn't one sighting, it was a bunch of activity that they were picking up on radar over for days, 
And then when they finally went out there to see it, yeah, they, they visually made contact with this shit. And it was just... And it was about the size of a jet fighter, you know? And it was just a damn... Shaped like a pill or a tic-tac, you know, with a couple little antennas coming out of the bottom little, of it. Little, little, little feet, feet coming out of the bottom of it. A tic-tac. And it was, you know, doing amazing acrobatics. And there were several of them. And I'm just, you know... And that evidently changed a bunch of Air Force policy, or excuse me, a, a bunch of military policy about reporting them. They're like, yeah, go ahead and report them. They want to know about it. And uh, they have camera footage, you know, because the, the trackers were locking on to it. So they know what they look like. They showed some of the stuff to the public, but one of the, one of the crewmen said that the, that the version that they had that the government took from them has a lot higher resolution that you could really see it really well, what it was. And they don't know what it was. Now, Trump made a comment on that. He said that he saw it, but he wasn't convinced. He's, you know, the new UFO stuff. Mm -hmm. They asked him, they said, you know, what's up with this new UFO shit? And he's like, yeah, 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 you know, I'm not convinced. But, you know, we, let's go ahead and take the reports. So, well, you know. Like I said, if it's UFOs, I wish they would, like, just pop in and go, hey, guys, it's us, and we have all this, that, and the other thing. That's help us bad, out, aliens. Some badass propulsion, you know. What we I mean? need help. Just you know, help us yeah. out. <laughs> no, they, they're not going to help. They don't have anything to do with us. They, they were doing something on the bottom of the ocean. If what these guys <laughs> saw, were, dicking around down there. they were dicking around on the bottom of the ocean, <laughs> and going underneath the ocean. They weren't here for us. They were looking at something else. And I mean, because you got to imagine, they're you like know, you guys are not they ain't shit. Yeah, you're right. They were looking at the earth. <laughs> They're gonna take over. The, they're gonna take over. I think it was AI. <laughs> I don't think there were any beings in it. I think there were robots doing it. Artificial intelligence. Well, how big robots. are how big are these Tic Tacs that you're talking about? About the size of a jet fighter. Okay, so they're big Tic Tacs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about the size of a jet. So fighter. there could be aliens in there. It could be, but there was a, but there was a bunch not. of them, and they were moving around crazy. Okay. And and then they would, uh, one of them evidently, according uh, uh, went into the water. Just pow! Hit the water and kept on going. Mm -hmm. It evidently slowed down. They got a, they did get a reading off of it. It slowed down a bit, but it didn't seem to. The transition from being in the air and going into the water didn't really wasn't traumatic for, for it. Hmm. So you're not talking about a normal craft, and you're yeah. just talking about something that's kind of bending the laws of physics. Um, you know they they have it, and you know, I saw the I saw some of the footage. That it's evidently not the good footage. Because that got taken away. They took, well, yeah, it's not, it's still kind of classified. They're like, yeah, you can just watch that you can in look like at the 360p or whatever. Yeah, it was the shitty low, the low resolution <laughs> footage is what, what they let you see. Jerks. But, uh, yeah, something's happening. We'll see. Yeah. Like I said. I'd be excited if, like, little extra extraterrestrials. Did you say extra testicles? Little no. extra testicles you come down? I wish I said that. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, alien testicles. That's yeah, real. That's what we need. It's extra testicles. It's not two. There's three of them. It's an extra <laughs> well, wait. One. Okay, if it's extra it's testicles extra plural, testicle. there would have to be two extra ones. Okay, there's not two. There's, there's two. There's five. <laughs> yeah, there's five. That works too. Okay. So they come down in like a little contingent, <laughs> a little testicle. You're trying contingent. to make sense out of somebody that just doesn't make sense. Okay, I don't, I'm not making sense right now. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> Go ahead, I'm just, no, I'm I'm having a good time, like just picturing these little alien testicles, like coming down from <laughs> from a distant star. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the testicular aliens. <laughs> yeah. Make We're, me want. Make me want to watch it. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Now. Well, we can watch it if you want to. I don't have it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, it might be on. It might be on. Um, Netflix or some shit. I'd probably fall asleep by the time it was done. I probably would too. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with I'm you. <laughs> what? I'm getting hungry. <laughs> oh, God. All right. You gotta wait till tomorrow. You gotta wait till tomorrow. Shut it down, Jenny. Come All on. right, I'm shutting it down. Shut it down. Now, shut because it. Tom will yell at me, I'm not allowed to do my little speech. Stop it. I'm not allowed just, anymore. No, you can, you can do it. I'm just saying. You can do it. If you want to support the show, just go to our Patreon page. Yeah, go to the Patreon. Go to Patreon, page. search 13 o'clock podcast. You'll yeah. find us. Or also, we have a PayPal. Yeah. If you want to get a PayPal. We're also on Facebook. Yeah. Look us up on Facebook. Just search 13 Podcast for us. You can pay us in money. You can pay us in taffy. 
You can pay us in fudge. <laughs> you can pay us. Got some got got a goth dude on on the border of Mexico. There, he's gonna fucking send us a, a bottle of tequila. So yeah, if tequila. you want to pay us in booze, that's tequila also much vodka. appreciated. We can do that shit too. Exotic, exotic <laughs> vodka. Exotic. All kinds of. It's I all like, good. All kind of candy, booze, yeah, coffee, it's all good. whatever. It's, it's all like, good. Jenny's book will be out. Any co- kind of food. Jenny's shit. book will be out in a few weeks. Uh, you know. I know. I'm working very hard. Only two more chapters, you guys. Shit's gonna kick ass. And it's like I'm, most of the audiobook is done too, most but it's like I too. still have to do like five chapters of. We audio. We got this shit down to the science now, so we're the the fucking. The, the, the print book, the ebook, and the audio book will be out within days of each other. Yeah, like the print and yeah. the ebook has to go up first because yeah. the audio book thing, you have to already have had a published print book that it's based right. off of, you know what I mean? And then when you upload the audio, like it usually takes like a, like 10 days, sometimes two weeks for them to like do the quality control and shit like that. Yeah, they got to check it. But you know, it's a, it's pretty much it's almost all done. And this is done with a new time. microphone and a new amp, so it's it's good. Yeah, it sounds much better than yeah. the other ones. Even though I did redo the other ones with yeah. the with this slightly with, with better. The Yeti. Yeah, with the Yeti. But the the new one I'm will be with the brand new. This is like mic. the real new, super expensive mic. Like, that's like hanging. yeah, it's gonna be a good one. You know. And then she's gonna reboot all her fiction. <clears throat> yeah, that'll be. It's gonna my be next, a one stop shop. That'll be my next project. Where you buy it. And it'll be a big print book. It'll have every all her fiction she's ever done, and all yeah, I'm doing one. several volumes of like yeah, it's gonna be cool, you know. That way I'm, you don't have to buy these little. I'm books. consolidating Consolidate. novels and yeah. unpublished short stories and all that kind of stuff. And, yeah, I'm gonna, kinda, and I'm gonna do audio versions because I've never done audiobook versions of any of my fiction before. Yeah. So. Same thing Stephen King did with like his work with like Monkey Shines and you know all, all the uh, his little short stories. Yeah, you it's know, not called that though. It's like what's it called? Somebody told me, and I keep forgetting. I thought it was called Monkey Shine. No. You're just thinking that because it's got, like, the monkey with the symbols, like, on the front, like, on the artwork, but it's not called that. It's called, oh, shit, somebody told me, and then I forgot again. I thought it was called Monkey Shine. No, it's not. That was a movie, though. Was it? That was a horror movie that came out in the late 80s, early 90s. It was about, like, a paraplegic, and he had a helper monkey, which... I wish I had a helper monkey. But yeah, he had a helper monkey that um, would get all his shit for him. Okay. Because he couldn't move his arms or legs. And of course, it all went terribly, terribly wrong and evil and whatnot because it's a horror movie. Okay. But yeah, so I think it was early 90s maybe. Right. Monkey Shines. It wasn't bad. <laughs> but I can't remember what the fucking book was yeah, called. Was it? I, thought, I thought it was called Monkey Shines. No, it's not. It's okay. just, I just can't remember what it was called. It had that monkey right on the... On the car. front with the symbols. Okay. Which is funny because it was that fucking... That movie that was on Mystery Science Theater, Merlin's Shop of Mystical Wonders. Yeah. And that was that whole, there was like a whole like through line of the whole fucking, because it had like a bunch of stories in it. Mm. And it had one of those monkeys with the symbol and he was like yeah. evil and he was like killing every, like, every time he put the symbols together, like people would die. That was, a good, that was a good collection, man. It had the mist on it. It had survivor type. It had the yeah. jaunt. Yeah. It had a bunch of good stories. Yeah, there was a lot of good stories. I yeah. have it somewhere. It's like it's up in the closet probably. That's oh. what like where all my paperback books are. All right. So probably you could look for it if you wanted to, if you really want to know what the title was, because I totally blanked I on it on again. I could look on the I totally internet. blanked on it again. And somebody like, because we talked about it before, and somebody yeah. in the comments said, oh, no, it's called this. And I was like, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I had forgotten all about it, and then, then I forgot again. Everybody knows it as Monkey Shines, and that's not the name <laughs> it's of it. It's not. That's not what it's called. Yeah. All right, so uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed episode 154 about this very weird disappearance and murder case. Uh, also on Unsolved Mysteries, if you want to look that shit up, it was uh, quite a few years ago. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.